High School Sports on Eagle TV brought to you by Service Master Clean. From the major accidents to the minor incidents, Service Master Clean of Hayes, Corey, Pam, and the entire staff support the efforts of Hayes High and TMP. Insurance planning, insurance for the way you work and live, for business, home, and family. Value the price, remember the service. Insurance planning, IPI financial services, and agro crop insurance. Thirsties, before or after the game, the best place for a hungry family, team, or individual is on North Vine and Hayes. It's Thirsties Brew Pub and Grill. Check out their all-time favorites and new items on the menu, too. Patty Bacon Rind Appraising, the lead provider of real estate valuations for the mortgage lending marketplace. With many years of experience, they have a proven track record. Contact Patty Bacon Rind today. Next Tech Wireless. They are the avid supporters of local high school athletic programs and have sponsored numerous high school events. They are committed to serving the communities they're in. Steel Fabrications. At Steel Fabrications, they know how to do it right. They also support local school athletes in all they do. Paul Wurtenberger Construction. Designing and building residential and commercial. Building dreams for over 30 years. Paul Wurtenberger Construction. TMP Marion Alumni. Through the dedication of students, parents, teachers, and alumni members, the focus is on Christian values and community awareness. TMP Marion, McDonald's of Hayes, Russell, and Waukini. A great place to go for you or the team on your way home from the game. McDonald's, supporting local academic and sporting activities. Hey Chevrolet, they have a huge selection of brand new Chevy cars, trucks, vans, SUVs, and a great selection of pre-owned vehicles. See them online at HayesChevrolet.com. NCK Tech, no matter what life you're trying to create, NCK Tech is here to help build a strong foundation. They are the local supporter of community events. Classic Quality Body Shop. They've been serving customers for over 33 years, so you know they have to be doing something right. Classic Quality Body Shop. Phase 2, always supporting local athletics. If you need quick printing of logos or designs on shirts, Phase 2 can handle any of your requests. They have you covered at Phase 2. Leon's Welding. Welding, fabrication, sandblasting, powder coating, even a fleet of mobile welding trucks. Supporting local school activities for over 30 years. Leon's Welding and Fabrication. Eagle Broadband. Eagle Broadband is your trusted internet, TV, and phone provider. They offer many scalable, forward-thinking solutions such as commercial services, managed IT, and marketing solutions for businesses of all sizes. Eagle Broadband. Eagle Communications is your ultimate business partner. We provide business class phone with customizable features and fast, reliable internet. Your knowledgeable team at Technology Solutions has a broad base of IT services to meet your needs. Let the experts at Marketing Solutions get your message to the right people on the best platforms. The only piece missing is your business. Call Eagle Communications today at 877-61-EAGLE. Glad to see you're back. These are my favorite shorts and I have no idea what I got on them. It's just peanut butter. We can get that out. Master Cleaners and Hayes offers a variety of services, including dry cleaning, alterations, laundry, tuxedo rentals, and free pickup and delivery. It's time to explore the great indoors. Grandpa, you know how to play this game? Where snacks are shared with smiles. Really? Another romantic comedy, Sarah? And family time comes first. Movie night is my favorite night. Explore the great indoors with Eagle Communications with TV and Internet starting at $84.99 for two years. Thank you, Thank you for choosing to style a classic quality body shop. Classic Quality Body Shop has had the pleasure of serving this area since 1984. Much like a sports team, Shelton and his team have worked hard, grown together, and followed the playbook of taking care of customers to become one of the most highly regarded body shops in the area. Support your local team, whether on the field or when choosing who you do business with. Thank you, thank you for choosing the style of Classic Quality Body Shop. See their ad in the next tech directory. Thank Wi-Fi. It should work anywhere in your home. 
Introducing Boost, the cutting edge Wi-Fi solution that makes dead zones history. Boost starts with a dual band modem and router with greater range than ever. Access points can be added anywhere there's a cable outlet to create more wired connections and stronger Wi-Fi to power all your family's devices in all the places you love to live. Learn more at eaglecom.net or call today and add the power of Boost to your Wi-Fi. Lifetime Dental Care is devoted to helping you, your family, and friends achieve your healthiest and brightest smile. They are now accepting new patients. Call 625-7969 to schedule your appointment. They know every person's dental needs are unique, and that is why they offer you a comprehensive selection of treatment options in a comfortable and caring atmosphere. Dr. Lowe and his dental team want you to enjoy your visit. Lifetime Dental Care, accepting new patients. Call 625-7969 or see them at lifetimedentalcare.com. Good morning. Everyone in Hay says you can clean anything, so can you get this tough stain out? Great jelly, we can get that out. Wow, you guys really are good. Master Cleaners in Hayes offers a variety of services including dry cleaning, alterations, laundry, tuxedo rentals, and free pickup and delivery. Hi, I'm Gary Shorman, President and CEO of Eagle Communications, a 100% employee-owned company. I'd like to personally thank you for selecting Eagle for your internet, television, and telephone service. By choosing Eagle, you're choosing to keep your dollars local with a company that reinvests back in your community. Let's make this a great year for your community. Check us out at eaglecom.net. Eagle Communications, our community connected. High School Sports on Eagle TV brought to you by Service Master Clean. From the major accidents to the minor incidents, Service Master Clean of Hayes, Corey, Pam, and the entire staff support the efforts of Hayes High and TMP. Insurance planning, insurance for the way you work and live, for business, home, and family. Value the price, remember the service. Insurance planning, IPI financial services, and agro crop insurance. Thirsties, before or after the game, the best place for a hungry family, team, or individual is on North Vine and Hayes. It's Thirsties Brew Pub and Grill. Check out their all-time favorites and new items on the menu, too. Patty Bacon Rind Appraising, the lead provider of real estate valuations for the mortgage lending marketplace. With many years of experience, they have a proven track record. Contact Patty Bacon Rind today. Next Tech Wireless. They are the avid supporters of local high school athletic programs and have sponsored numerous high school events. They are committed to serving the communities they're in. Steel Fabrications. At Steel Fabrications, they know how to do it right. They also support local school athletes in all they do. Paul Wartenberger Construction. Designing and building residential and commercial. Building dreams for over 30 years. Paul Wartenberger Construction. TMP Marion Alumni. Through the dedication of students, parents, teachers, and alumni members, the focus is on Christian values and community awareness. TMP Marion, McDonald's of Hayes, Russell, and Waukini. A great place to go for you or the team on your way home from the game. McDonald's, supporting local academic and sporting activities. Hey Chevrolet, they have a huge selection of brand new Chevy cars, trucks, vans, SUVs, and a great selection of pre-owned vehicles. See them online at HayesChevrolet.com. NCK Tech, no matter what life you're trying to create, NCK Tech is here to help build a strong foundation. They are the local supporter of community events. Classic Quality Body Shop. They've been serving customers for over 33 years, so you know they have to be doing something right. Classic Quality Body Shop. Phase two, always supporting local athletics. If you need quick printing of logos or designs on shirts, phase two can handle any of your requests. They have you covered at phase two. Leon's Welding, welding, fabrication, sandblasting, powder coating, even a fleet of mobile welding trucks, supporting local school activities for over 30 years. Leon's Welding and Fabrication. Eagle Broadband. Eagle Broadband is your trusted internet, TV and phone provider. They offer many scalable forward-thinking solutions such as commercial services, managed IT, and marketing solutions for businesses of all sizes. Eagle Broadband. Eagle Communications is your ultimate business partner. We provide business class phone with customizable features and fast, reliable internet. 
Your knowledgeable team at Technology Solutions has a broad base of IT services to meet your needs. Let the experts at Marketing Solutions get your message to the right people on the best platforms. The only piece missing is your business. Call Eagle Communications today at 877-61-EAGLE. Glad to see you're back. These are my favorite shorts and I have no idea what I got on them. Mm. It's just peanut butter. We can get that out. Master Cleaners and Hayes offers a variety of services including dry cleaning, alterations, laundry, tuxedo rentals, and free pickup and delivery. It's time to explore the great indoors. Grandpa, you know how to play this game? Where snacks are shared with smiles. Really? Another romantic comedy, Sarah? And family time comes first. Movie night is my favorite night. Explore the great indoors with Eagle Communications with TV and Internet starting at $84.99 for two years. Thank you, Thank you for choosing to stop at Classic Quality Body Shop. Classic Quality Body Shop has had the pleasure of serving this area since 1984. Much like a sports team, Shelton and his team have worked hard, grown together, and followed the playbook of taking care of customers to become one of the most highly regarded body shops in the area. Support your local team, whether on the field or when choosing who you do business with. Thank you, thank you for choosing the style at Classic Quality Body Shop. See their ad in the next tech directory. Wi-Fi. It should work anywhere in your home. Introducing Boost, the cutting-edge Wi-Fi solution that makes dead zones history. Boost starts with a dual-band modem and router with greater range than ever. Access points can be added anywhere there's a cable outlet to create more wired connections and stronger Wi-Fi to power all your family's devices in all the places you love to live. Learn more at eaglecom.net or call today and add the power of Boost to your Wi-Fi. Lifetime Dental Care is devoted to helping you, your family, and friends achieve your healthiest and brightest smile. They are now accepting new patients. Call 625-7969 to schedule your appointment. They know every person's dental needs are unique, and that is why they offer you a comprehensive selection of treatment options in a comfortable and caring atmosphere. Eagle Communications is your ultimate business partner. We provide business class phone with customizable features and fast, reliable internet. Your knowledgeable team at Technology Solutions has a broad base of IT services to meet your needs. Let the experts at Marketing Solutions get your message to the right people on the best platforms. The only piece missing is your... We can get that out. Master Cleaners and Hayes offers a variety of services including dry cleaning, alterations, laundry, tuxedo rentals, and free pickup and delivery. It's time to explore the great indoors. Grandpa, you know how to play this game? Where snacks are shared first. Movie night is my favorite night. Explore the great indoors with Eagle Communications with TV and Internet starting at $84.99 for two years. Thank you, thank you for choosing offer you a comprehensive selection of treatment options in a comfortable and caring atmosphere. Dr. Lowe and his dental team want you to enjoy your visit. Lifetime Dental Care, accepting new patients. Call 625-7969 or see them at LifetimeDentalCare.com. Good morning. Everyone in Hayes says you can clean anything, so can you get this tough stain out? Great jelly, we can get that out. Wow, you guys really are good. Master Cleaners and Hayes offers a variety of services including dry cleaning, alterations, laundry, tuxedo rentals, and free pickup. 3,380 yards in his career. Oisington won the toss, so the to the second half, so TMP will get the football to start the second half. And then Mason Haxton, the 5'11", 165-pound junior, gets the start at the quarterback position. Cardinals are in those home white uniform, or the home red uniforms, rather, with the white 
white helmet. They have the white numbers trimmed in black and the red face mask with the Cardinal logo on the side. Meanwhile, the Monarchs in their road white jerseys, the dark blue numbers with the dark blue pants, the dark blue helmet, and that uh, nice shiny TMP cross on the side. That's our uniform update brought to you by Phase 2 from Business Polos to Team Care. Your first choice should be Phase 2 screen printing and embroidery, no minimum order plus quick turnaround time. Phase 2 screen printing and embroidery just out Vine on 22nd Street next to Big D's Rintel and Hayes. Dave, the Monarch offense was a struggle through the first three weeks of the season. Gets their first chance at it here tonight at the Hoisington football field. Yeah, see what they're going to do watching them in warm up. Looked like we're going to try to spread things out a little bit more with the uh, freshman quarterback under center for the first time. Test his arm out a little bit maybe and see how how the uh, Hoisington Cardinals react. But uh, exciting, a beautiful evening here with the breeze, the sun going down a little bit. The breeze is cooling things off and uh, it's going to be a beautiful evening for some football. Washington will kick from our right to our left. It'll be from the west to the east. So the Monarchs first uh, quarter of play will go from the east to the west. As we sit on the home side of the football field behind the Hoisington bench, the TMP bench and the TMP faithful on the opposite side of the field from us. So we're just about ready to get this one underway. Monarchs will have a Cade Harris, the freshman and Jason Whitling ready to return the kick. The sophomore Whitling joins Harris right around the 20 yard line as we await the the kickoff to get week number four underway between the Monarchs and the Hoisington Cardinals. Monarchs try to put an end to that seven game losing streak at the hands of the Hoisington Cardinals. As we are just about ready to get this one underway, Braden Mooney has it teed up and the uh, kickoff is a directional kick. It'll be Harris from just inside the 19-yard line. Cade trying to get to the tw uh, 30, and he does. Maybe just shy of the 30 as the Monarchs will start at their own 29-yard line. Quincy Cross comes up to make the tackle, and the Monarchs on their first possession of the ball game will start just inside their own 30-yard line. Well, that's a pretty nice return and good field position. That's been another problem for the Monarchs is field position throughout the first three weeks of the game. They need to uh, flip the field a little bit and be a good way to get the game started. And the official blew the play dead. He wanted the play clock to restart. Uh, they have the play clock on the field here at Hoisington. And they Want them to restart it again, and so now they'll set the fresh 25, and we're ready to go. It'll be Harris out of the shotgun, two wide receivers set to each side, and they'll send Jace Lang in motion. They'll hand it off for the first play of the game. It's Colby Dryling who goes right behind the center and guard of Garrett Pfeiffer, Connor Staub, and Pfeiffer able to pick up four on first down. Or uh, making Colby Dryling able to pick up four behind Pfeiffer on first down. <laughs> Switch positions. On you. <laughs> We're used to Harris getting that carry early, but a good pickup on first down right up the middle, testing that uh, pretty solid defensive line for Hoisington. After a gain of four, Dryling, who had just 10 carries coming in, stands in the backfield. He'll get the second call and had a lot of running room trying to run off of that right side. He'll get across the 35 to the 36. And so he will pick up two more on the play as he's brought down by Pedigo and company. And now it sets the Monarchs up with third down and about five. I'd like to see him pick this up and get those chains moving right now. On our starting offensive line of Kraus, Legree, Garrett Pfeiffer, Staub, and Atherton leading the way. They'll send Jace Lang in motion. Harris working out of the shotgun. He'll keep it, try to run right. He's got a block from Lang as he'll get the first down across the 44 to the 45 as he's driven out of bounds on the play by Cade Mason. But now before, Harris picks up a first down carry to the 45-yard line. Yeah, and that was a great job by Harris on the zone read. Uh, defensive end came in, and he pulled it and took out off the outside tackle of where that in vacated and made a nice pickup. Big first down. Monarchs already pushing the, the midfield marker. Ball to 45. Cade picks up nine on a quarterback keeper to the right side as they go to the 45. On first down and 10. Two wide receivers to each side. It'll be Jace Lang again in motion to the left of the formation. Harris is going to keep it. Makes a man miss. He got a block. He'll get to the outside and get close to midfield. Down to the 48-yard line as Cade Harris carries it again. Brought down 
This time by Jacob Speck to the senior. Harris on back-to-back -back carries. This one's four to the 49. And that's a couple of times in a row on their first drive. They picked up four-plus yards on that first down. So big for this offense to be set up second down in that mid-range. Harris getting his first start at quarterback because of the injury to Bryce Seib. Zachary Mice, the junior, also getting his first start of the season. Dryling, Lang, both Lance and Jace wide receivers. Jace will go in motion. Quick pitch right side for Dryling, and he'll get to midfield, and then he's knocked down. Just a little quick pitch to that right side, and he ran into his offensive line. Specton company in on the tackle. Short gain of one for Colby Dryling. It's third down. Yeah, pretty Pretty good block on the edge out here by Lang, and I think if he would have maybe bounced that outside, there might have been a little bit room, but that's easy to say from up here. Monarchs with Rack lined up as a wide receiver to the left side. The sophomore Mark lined up with Whitling to that left side of the formation. Out of the shotgun as Specht shows blitz here on third down. Snap back to the quarterback. Harris as Dryling will make one man miss. Nearly had it ripped away, but he gets into Hoisington territory. On third down and a long five, he gets four, and it's fourth and one. Yeah, they gave, him a, gave themselves an opportunity at least to think about going for it here, and I think they will as uh, they see a chance to keep the chains moving again with fourth and short. Colby Dryling came into this game with 10 carries for 24 yards. His long was five. He already has four carries for 11 yards after a gain of four. So it's fourth and one. And I go back to the double tight for the first time. Snap back to Harris, the quarterback. Harris trying the quarterback sneak. And I'm not sure he got there. The official on the far side gave him a pretty favorable spot. Official here on the near side didn't give him the 45. Oh Speck says he didn't get it. The far side official is saying no spotted at the 45. They're having a discussion on where Cade got it. This is close. If they spot it where the official on the Monarch side of the field was, it's a first down. If they spot it on the Hoisington side judge official where he spotted it, they're sure by about a half a yard. Yeah, I That's think they're going to get the far side. Yeah, I think they got a favorable, I don't know if it was a favorable spot, but the official on that side of the field had a completely different spot by about a half yard or so from the official on the near side. Well, the official on the near side, when he originally marked it, it looked like he was on the other side of the 45 as well. And as he ran in, he, he backed it up. But the Monarchs are going to get another huge first down. Second first down of this drive. Monarchs converts. They get after the measurement by about the length of the football to the Hoisington 45, just inside that Hoisington 45-yard line. So Cade Harris, the quarterback keeper, just sent out for a first down, their second of this drive as the Monarchs are driving. Two wide receivers to each side out of the shotgun. It's Jace Lang in motion. They're just going to take it left side. Harris got a two blocks from Lang and Dryling, but really nowhere to go. Maybe a gain of a yard as Chandler Blackwell will make the tackle. The modern quarter, quarterback tried to keep it left side and picks up a yard. Yeah, that uh, Hoisington defense that time, great pursuit off the edge and just there, there was nowhere to go for Harris. Clock will wind close to eight minutes to go here in this opening quarter. Monarchs took the opening kickoff and have picked up two first downs on this drive as they've got it to the Hoisington 44-yard line. Two wide receivers to each side. Harris out of the shotgun. First pass attempt. It's complete left side to Jace Whitling, who will bring it inside the 40 down to the Hoisington 38-yard line. At a gain of seven, sets the Monarchs up third down and a short three on the first pass completion for Harris. And it goes to Jace Whitling on that left side. Boy, that's a great drive to get the freshman comfortable at quarterback. Getting the, the ball moving a little bit on the ground, moving the chains and a little just a quick slant there on the far side and and a short pass right on the money they're down on three they'll go back to the shotgun three wide receivers they'll send a rack in motion it's a fake handoff Harris is going to keep it right side they'll be swarmed and dropped Kate is not going to get back to the line of scrimmage that time as coming through and making the play was the outside linebacker Cole Steiner Harris Tried to find a seam right side, and he loses about a half yard. It's fourth down, and call it three and a half. Yeah, again, the defense just swarming that time, and uh, they've kind of, kind of caught up to it a little bit here on these last couple of plays for Harris. But 
Another big fourth down opportunity. Monarchs now one for three on third down on this drive. They did convert on fourth down. Out of the shotgun on fourth and a long four. Harris will work out of the shotgun, and he gets it to Dryling. Colby trying to run off the left side, and he'll get the first down. Dryling up that hash mark is able to get to the 34-yard line before he's brought down on the play by Josh Ball. That's a gain of six and a first down. Well, this is a great first drive for the Monarchs, and they swung this field position there really in scoring position almost now they've got to finish we talked about finishing drives this will be a big one Dialing to the 33 yard line as the monarchs continue to move the football and another first down their third of this drive two wide receivers to each side as harris will work out of the shotgun jace lang will go in motion to the left here on first down and 10 harris will keep it left side and cade lost the football josh ball came in to tackle him hoisington says they've got the football the official says harris got back on it at the 35 it's a loss of a yard on the play so a break as harris had that popped free by josh ball and he'll lose two on the play. Well, good job of covering it up because it looked like there were red jerseys all over the place over there. So Harris strong with the ball after it hit the ground. But uh, coming up on the 12th play of the drive, that's an impressive first drive by the Monarchs. Need to keep it going. Back to the 35-yard line. Six minutes to go, first quarter. Monarchs on their opening possession with the football on the drive. Second down and 12. Harris looking to pass. Rolling right. Kate's going to step up over the middle. He's got Lance Lang. He'll make the catch of the 20. Try to angle for the end zone to the 10. To the 5. Dives for the pylon. And he's going to be out of bounds. High of the goal line. They'll mark him out of bounds at the 3. First down for the Monarchs. And that was nearly a Lance Lang touchdown. Instead, it sets him up first down and goal. A gain of 20. Call it 32 on the play. Well, the freshman delivering a beautiful pass as uh, <laughs> Lane crossed in the middle, wide open in the middle of that zone defense. Hit him right in stride and almost able to stretch across the pylon. First down and goal from the three out of the shotgun. Man in motion is Jace Lang. Harris will give it for Dryling. Colby reaches for the goal line. No signal yet. There he's in. Touchdown for Colby Dryling. And the first time for 2019, the TMP Marion Monarchs score on their opening possession as they take it right down the field and score with 5.37 to go here in the opening quarter. They lead 6-0 on the three-yard touchdown run from Colby Dryling. 13 plays, Jonathan, 70 yards and a touchdown to open the game. Mon <laughs> Hoisington might be going, what happened? <laughs> what just happened? Now the defense needs to take advantage of this momentum because this is huge for this Monarch team on the road. First time the Monarchs have been able to drive down the field on their first possession and score on the opening possession did, for a touchdown. Did they not give them a touchdown? It, they got second down and... Oh, they didn't. You're right. He, the official on the far sidelines signaled touchdown, so now we'll have to do it again. Harris was hit. <laughs> He's going to be stopped. So take it. The uh, official on the sideline, and Scary Harris won't get the touchdown. So it, now it's third down and goal from the one. Cade was about a yard out and still couldn't quite get in. So they called Dryling down at about the yard, uh, the one yard line. And then Harris, I saw TMP coach just ready to run in the field goal unit after they called for the touchdown. Harris will try and keep it again. Harris right up the middle and there he's in for the touchdown. Officially, the Monarchs are on the board for the first time on their opening drive. It comes with the 436 mark of the first quarter. So now we can officially say the Monarchs have driven down the field and scored. Just took them a couple extra plays. Well, now it's 15 plays <laughs> instead of 13, but more impressive yet. And the Monarchs Monarch still get the touchdown in the end. Kate Harris will score his second rushing touchdown of 2019. And now Jace Whitling on to kick the extra point. And we've got a penalty flag on the play. It's going to be on the Monarchs before the snap. Yeah, somebody got a little anxious. The first penalty of the contest after the one-yard run. Monarchs will now be backed up. And Jace will attempt the extra point here out of the hold of Harris from the 15. And the kick is high enough, and it is no good. Might have missed it to the right. But the Monarchs are able to take advantage of a 15-play 
70 yard drive and with 436 to go here in the opening quarter the monarchs lead hoisington six nothing thanks to the kate harris one yard touchdown it took harris a couple extra to get in <laughs> well, so uh they get on the board yeah and what's more impressive like we said 15 plays but they also took six minutes and 24 yeah. seconds it took half over half that first quarter clock off kept the, the hoisington offense off the field got to be feeling good if you're a monarch fan right now monarchs on there first possession of the contest drive right down the field and we saw the four wide the spread but they only threw it two times now they did have the big play on a catch by lang but still a lot of spread to run the football led by kate harris kate finished with 14 yards on that eight carries on that drive kobe dryling got 19 yards on six carries so you like what you see from the monarchs to open up this one leading six nothing yeah, that, that was huge. Huge for this Monarch offense. And you could see the guys on the field celebrating like they should. Similar to against Ellis when they were able to get on the board early. Feel comfortable about the way you're able to take the opening kickoff and drive right down the field. I like what you see here as they on the road gets a six nothing lead here and now willing ready to kick this one off he'll kick it to the west it'll be fielded by hunter morris back inside the five and he is swarmed at the 20 and brought down by pfeiffer as that time garrett pfeiffer makes the tackle and hoisington will have their first possession of this first quarter with four and a half to go in the first quarter as they will take over at their own 20 yard lot. You know, great coverage again, set up with the long field position. See if the defense can maintain and keep them pinned down here. Washington had not given up a touchdown in the first quarter and now on first down they'll pitch it left side trying to get to the 20 and a good stiff arm across the 20 to the 25 running with a good head of steam before he's knocked out of bounds is Cole Steiner the junior so they pitch it left side as he's brought down by Colby Dryling but that'll be a first down gain for Steiner who picks up 10 on first down. Well pretty good play call everybody was expecting the full back up the middle and uh, just ran the little pitch with a fake to him and Pretty wide open on the right side. Steiner only had nine rush attempts coming into this contest. And he gets the first carry. They'll clear out the backfield. Pettigo, the fullback, the only one in there. And he gets it. He stacked up off that left side and brought down. Monarchs had three guys around him. Legree down below along with Ethan Atherton and company. And that is a gain of about maybe a half yard on first down for Pettigo. Yeah, Legree, Atherton, and Pfeiffer in there getting low too. Weston Pfeiffer getting in on that as well. And, boy, that's a great job of team tackling right at the line of scrimmage for the Monarchs. Monarchs up front with Atherton, Legree, and Connor Staub, although they will rotate. They have Pfeiffer into the contest already. Is Weston one of those down linemen? And here's another handoff. This time left side, it's Pettigo. And he'll be stacked up off the left guard. Brought down this time by Garrett Pfeiffer. He had three sacks in last week's contest. Pettigo picks up three, and it's third down and seven. Yeah, Garrett's been playing really well as well as, well as that defensive front for the Monarchs. To the 33-yard line. Those linebackers, Michael Hale getting his first start. They also have Colby Dryling, the leading tackler in there as well. Here on a third down and seven motion man and the Monarchs come off sides. That's not what you need when you have them third and seven. A five yard penalty on the Monarchs. It's the second penalty on the Monarchs as Legree, the defensive tackle, out a little ahead of him south that time and what was third down and seven becomes third down and two uh, so they'll move that one to the 37 yard line after the five yard penalty 
And this third down became a lot easier for this offense as they go back to that three wing set motion man as Morris Monarchs bring the blitz with Dryling and they slip it through to Pedigo. He's got a big gain across midfield. Pedigo makes the man, misses. He just bulls through defender, still fighting as he's inside the Monarch 30 all the way down to the Monarch 28 yard line. He just flipped the field on third down and short. He'll get all the way to the Monarch, well inside the Monarch 30 to the 28 yard line and a first down on the play as Pedigo with his big carry that time gives him a first down as he gets and Monarch's trying to bring a lot of pressure at the line of scrimmage and if you don't hit him at the line of scrimmage he gets into that second level that's that's a problem I tell you what Lance Lang back there saving a saving a touchdown hanging on for dear life with the tackle get a 37, make it 40 in a first down. He's got 47 yards already. Now here's a little underneath handoff and stacked up in the line of scrimmage. This time it's Josh Ball. They tried to hand it off the ball underneath and he's stacked up by Pfeiffer and company. Lost a yard on the play. Well, there's been a couple of times the quarterbacks kind of bobbled the handle on the snap or the exchange. So maybe we'll see one of those hit the ground. Monarchs defense, we talked about Atherton, Legree, Staub, both Weston and Garrett Pfeiffer will see throughout the day. Hale Dryling, Andrew Schwartz gets his first start in the defensive secondary along with Cade Harris, Wentling, and Lang. Here on a third down and 11, pitch it left side, and it's behind the running back as Steiner had to go back and get it across the 35, and he'll be knocked down at the 38-yard line. He's going to lose close to nine on the play. Monarchs Staub and company able to come up and make a big tackle back to the 38. Yeah, good job of, of not just kind of stand with the play and contain it once that ball hit the ground and in a big loss, third and forever. No loss of close to eight on the play, so it's a third down all the way back to the 38 yard line with 136 to go here in this first quarter. Monarchs with the lead. Here's a little screen pass set up to Pedigo as he's at the numbers and he's got blockers out in front. He's going to take it to the house on third down and long. A 38 yard screen play for Wyatt Pedigo and it ties this ball game up and they set it up perfectly. Monarchs have, bring, have been bringing pressure to stop Pedigo and Mason Haxton finds Pedigo for the 38-yard touchdown pass on the screen. Yeah, that's uh, seven plays to go 80 yards, and that screen was, like you said, set up perfectly. Monarchs looked like they were going to, sometimes as a defensive lineman, when you break through that easy, you got to realize there's a screen behind you coming, and they hit it for a big 38-yard touchdown. And on the extra point attempt, Toysington takes the 7-0 lead as kicking the extra points was Jamie Ekanove, his first opportunity to kick the point after touchdown. And just like that, Hoisington takes the lead on the uh, point after touchdown. So Monarchs defense played pretty well, but you give up the big play on that big screen, and now you're trailing by one here. Yeah, that, it was just a, it was a beautifully executed screen. The Monarchs got that pressure, that wall of pressure, and the quarterback just waited for him to come through and dumped it over the top of him, and he had all kinds of blockers in front of him. And uh, there was too much green and too much room for Pettico not to get that one across the goal line. Pettico with his third touchdown receiving of the season. So he has four catches. Three of them have went for touchdowns. And they now lead 7-6 to six following the extra points. And a quick strike that time after the Monarchs defense have played pretty well. Back to Washington, back up. But unfortunately, Monarchs get beat on the screen and now trail by one. Our game brought to you part by Next Tech, Midwest Energy, Heartland Building Center, Gibbs Auto Supply, Steel Fabrications, and Discount Siding. With 126 to go here in this opening quarter, it's 7-6, Hoisington with the lead. And ready to kick it off is Harrison Lowe, or excuse me, it's Braden Moody. Mooney for the Hoisington Cardinals ready to kick it away. And again, they kind of directional kick it away from Harris. Cade on the run at the 24 from the right side. Slips the tackle in the middle of the football field across the 30 and up to the 33-yard line. And so the Monarchs will take over at their own 33-yard line following a 15-play drive to start out the contest. They've got 119 to play here in this first quarter. 7-6, Hoisington with the lead, but 
like what you see from the Monarchs, able to drive down the field and score on that possession. Yep, just need more of the same here in this next drive as, as uh, Hoisington kind of took some of that momentum with that 77 play 80 yard drive. It only took about uh, two minutes and 10 seconds off the clock. Monarchs will send three wide receivers, including Michael Gross, to the right side. As Harris will work out of the shotgun with Dryling next to him in the backfield. It's a little run pass option. Harris running out of time. Kate's going to throw it up the numbers right side. Overshot his man, and it's dropped. Should have been picked off up the right side. Hunter Morris had to go in and out of his hands. He was looking down the field for Lance Lang. It was Kate Harris. And luckily for the Monarchs, that one was incomplete. Yeah, and... and Lang pretty well covered up down there too, thrown into coverage. He had Gross underneath. If he would have seen him, had him pretty wide open. First incomplete pass of the contest for Harris. He was two for two for 39 yards before that one. Came in just one of six for 23 yards. No touchdowns, no interceptions prior to today's contest. Two wide receivers to each side. Two wide receivers. Now they'll send actually Lang in motion, and we're going to get a play game penalty on the Monarchs. And unlike most places, or the majority of places, the play clock is actually on the field. So that one, unfortunately, for the Monarchs is one you should be able to avoid on their third penalty of the contest. So move the ball back to the 28-yard line. 7-6, Hoisington with the lead. Late here in this first quarter. Two wide receivers again to each side out of the shotgun is Harris. Jace Lang will go in motion, and it's a quarterback keeper. As Harris takes it off that left side across the 30. Spot him up to the 32-yard line. And so now it's third down at about 12 after a gain of three for Harris. Yeah, again, that penalty sets them behind the chains. Now, third and long, going to have to come up with a play. Clock winding close to 30 seconds to go in this first quarter. 7-6, Hoisington with the lead. Monarchs send four wide receivers to the right, one to the left. Harris will send Dryling in motion. Colby's going to block, looking to throw the screen as Harris. Here's pressure from behind, and it will be dropped. Back to the 25. Good coverage on that play by Hoisington. And coming from behind to make the sack. That time was Josh Ball back to the 25-yard line. Harris will lose about seven on the play, and that's how the first quarter will come to an end. 7-6, Hoisington has the lead after one quarter. Monarchs will face fourth down and long when we return on the Monarch Sports Network, serviced by Dave's Auto Repair. Classic Quality Body Shop has had the pleasure of serving this area since 1984. Much like a sports team, Shelton and his team have worked hard, grown together, and followed the playbook of taking care of customers to become one of the most highly regarded body shops in the area. Support your local team, whether on the field or when choosing who you do business with. Thank you, thank you for choosing the style of Classic Quality Body Shop. See their ad in the next tech directory. Good morning. Everyone in Hayes says you can clean anything. So can you get this tough stain out? Grape jelly, we can get that out. Wow, you guys really are good. Master Cleaners in Hayes offers a variety of services, including dry cleaning, alterations, laundry, tuxedo rentals, and free pickup and delivery. This is Eagle TV. After one quarter of play, the Hoisington Cardinals lead the TMP Marion Monarchs 7-6. Monarchs got a one-yard touchdown run from Cade Harris. It looked from our vantage points and to one of the officials' vantage points that Colby Dryland got in from three yards out, but Cade was eventually able to cap off the first touchdown drive of the game for the Monarchs. And then Haxton was able to find Pedigo a moment ago on that screen play for Hoisington from 30 yards out to 38 yards out. They were able to convert the extra point. And so Hoisington leads 7 to 6. Monarchs with a fourth down and long as we begin this quarter. And in the second quarter, Monarchs are going to take a timeout. Looked like 
Coach Harris didn't like something he saw on the sideline, and so he takes the time out. Hmm. Our game brought to you in part by Edward Jones, Lifetime Dental Care, Lewis Automotive Group, Thomas Moore Prep Marion, and State Glass Company. Well, the defense now is going to have to answer the call right now as, as uh, Hoisington has stolen all the early momentum with their last drive and then a three and out. See the Monarchs fake a punt a couple of different times already this season. So I'm curious maybe if Coach Harris thought they were going to try and fake something. They have done it deep inside their end zone, or they did last week deep inside their own territory, and it resulted in a turnover on downs, but defense was able to hold, but Coach Harris must have saw something and decided to take the time out. There's Avery Brewer. Hunter Morris back to return this punt. Just Wentling ready to kick it away. And stands inside the Monarch 15-yard line. It's Wentling with a short kick. It's going to give Foising to great field position. Monarchs are back at their own 26-yard line. They spot this out of bounds at the 42. So great field position on the short punt for the Monarch punter. And Hoisington will take over after the Monarchs are forced to go three and out on their second possession of the contest. And Hoisington from the TMP 42 yard line will have it with 11.53 to play in this second quarter. Hoisington out of that multiple back set. They're going to pitch it right side. It's Pedigo. He's got a block around front. It's Pedigo. He's got a huge run inside the 30. Makes a man miss. Makes a second man miss inside the 25. And then finally his gang tackle tackled by the Monarchs. But now before he gets all the way down to the 10-yard line, a gain of actually to the 9. It's a gain of 33 and a first down for Wyatt Pedigo. Yeah, great block or at least had him tied up pretty good. I thought he might get a holding call, but... Uh, again, sprung Pedigo to the outside. A huge play. Um, He's got Poisington knocking on the door again. A run of thir a run of 40, a run of 33, and a pass catch of 38 already here in this opening quarter. Motion man is Morris. They're going to fake the pitch, hand it off to the right side. It's the uh, wide receiver, tight end Avery Brewer, who will get inside the five down to the four as he picks up five on the play. You know, Atherton got, looked like he was going to get in there and got a peelback block on him and again sprung it to the outside. A lot of misdirection right there by Hoisington. And fortunately, the Monarchs didn't let him score. Second down and goal. Hoisington has it from the four. Cross the wide receiver to the left, Brewer to the right. Motion man is Morris, and they hand it off. Pedigo right up the middle, and he runs through a Monarch tackle. And from four yards out, Pedigo is in for the touchdown. And so now they're up 13-6 to following the first rushing touchdown of the contest for Pedigo. Pedigo, who already has 84 yards on five carries, scores his ninth rushing touchdown of the season. Going to attempt the extra point once again. And the uh, kick is on the way, and it is good. And it is 14 to 6 in favor of the Washington Cardinals. Following the four yard touchdown run for Wyatt Pedigo. Well, Hoisington has taken that initial punch in the gut and uh, came back with two big hooks of their own to score on two draw. This time, just three plays to go 42 yards and uh, didn't take much time. Just a little over a minute, minute, six seconds off the clock. So Pedigo with the four yard touchdown. It comes at the 10-47 mark. Here in this second quarter, mentioned Pedigo with runs of 33 and 40 and a pass reception on a screenplay that went for a touchdown for 38 yards. The big play 
for Pettigo and company has been the difference in giving them the lead. Yeah, and we knew he was their offense, and uh, we, you and I talked about it before the game of having, you got to make somebody else beat you, and they're going to have to find a way to slow him down. pettigo has been able to run through tackles so far as Mooney has it teed up and is ready to kick it. Some Monarchs with Harris. Actually, it's it is Harrison Whitling back around the 20-yard line as Mooney will kick it from east to west here in this second quarter. Line drive kick that'll bounce through into the hands of Harris on the right side at the 20. Cade is going to be stacked up and gets across the 30. As Harris will get a return of 10, Avery Brewer in on the tackle. Also, Noah Wilborn comes up to make the tackle that time, and the Monarchs will have it at their own 30-yard line. Down a touchdown early on here in this second quarter. 10.41 to play in the quarter. Yeah, this is a this is a crucial drive right now. They cannot afford to to stall and give this ball right back to an offense that is really starting to find their rhythm. Freshman quarterback Harris will break the huddle with two wide receivers to the left of the formation. He'll send Lang in motion and hand it off. It's Dryling who's hit, able to get away from the initial man as a flag comes in late. Oh, he's going to lose a yard to the 29. As Cameron Schneewise led the way from his linebacker position, they call a face mask on the Hoisington Cardinals. Well, it's either going to be a hold or uh, as late as it came in, you thought it might be that. And that's a big break to get a free five yards. That'll be first down. And... A long five, call it first and six, following the first penalty on Hoisington as the ball now moves to the Monarch 34-yard line on first down. Handoff underneath, and good job on a good game that time. Close to the 38, a handoff right up the middle. They go again with Colby Dryling, spot him to the 38-yard line, four on the game for Colby. Well, I really like the way Dryling's running tonight. He's hitting the hole quick and just getting low and, and, and charging forward. Got to go and Schneeweiss again on the tackle. Monarchs with a second down and short two. Two wide receivers to each side. They'll send Jace Lang in motion to the right. Harris takes it. He's going to keep it himself. He's got the corner. Then quickly, Hoisington was able to close. They then pick him up and slam him to the turf. He'll get to the 38. That was the line of scrimmage as Steiner comes up. Brewer in on the tackle as well. No gain. And it's third down and two facing the Monarchs. From the 38-yard line. Harris looked like for a moment he had the side or had the corner, but good job to close out by that Hoisington defense. Yeah, that was good speed there, because like you said, it looked like he was going to have it by by plenty. The end on the play, Josh Ball had crashed inside, and if it wasn't for the good pursuit by the outside backer of Steiner and safety Brewer, Harris gets there. Motion man is Jace Lang, low snap. Here comes the pressure. Harris will get away from one as he'll roll to the right side. Now he's going to throw it late. He's got his man. It's Lance Lang will make the catch. The 45, he's got a first down, and then a flag came in late, and Zach Baird is the reason why that flag got thrown here on the near sideline. He was all over the official here on the near sideline. As it stands now, Monarchs have it to the Hoisington 44-yard line, but it's coming back. Yeah, play took too long. It had a lineman downfield. Lang recognized his quarterback was in trouble, did a great job of coming back and making himself available, and a good find, but unfortunately had a, re had a lineman go downfield on the scramble. Give the Hoisington sideline an assist for that call. That official did not see. He wasn't going to call that until... Baird here on the near sideline helped out. So the penalty on the Monarchs, the, the man downfield as Coach Harris wants the explanation. Move the Monarchs. And the gate's a pretty good gain, and now back to the 33, and it's third down and long. Motion man, they'll pitch it left side for Dryling, and Colby tried to cut it back up and just nowhere to go. He'll get a yard to the 35, but he needed six. Ball and company able to stop him for a gain of just a yard and it's fourth down and five yeah again a penalty penalty really cost the monarchs as they were starting to move the ball again see if they decide 
they're going to punt it away. But like you said, we've seen them run a fake. But Hoisington has probably seen that on film as well. That's a legal man downfield. Penalty negated an 18-yard gain for the Monarchs. And now Whitling will punt it away here on fourth down and long. So Monarchs are unable to convert on third down. Ball will bounce inside Hoisington territory and take a Monarch roll for a minute and then be down to at the Hoisington 38-yard line. So Monarchs were all and able to convert that time. Now one for four on third down here in the first half. And Hoisington leading 14-6 will get it back after the Monarchs have punted on their last two possessions. And Hoisington's going to have decent field position again. And so they'll take over at their own 38-yard line with 8-10 to play here in this first half. Hoisington on top, 14-6. to six. Defense has got to come up with a stop right now. Get a scoreboard update for you, brought to you by Hayes Kalon, Norton, and Phillipsburg tied at 7 in the second quarter. Motion man, it's play action, looking to pass as Haxton. Pressure in his face as Mason Haxton will get away from one, one man and then get pushed out of bounds late by a Monarch on that sideline. Kate Harris will get credit for the tackle at the 43-yard line. He had pressure in his face from Pfeiffer, but he got away, and Haxton actually spot him out of bounds at the 42-yard line, so he picks up just four on that quarterback scramble. First run of the game for Mason Haxton. A big hit on that sideline by Harris over there. Another scoreboard update for you. Smith Center with midway through that first quarter leads... Plainville 7 0. Right, Hayes Kalon scoreboard update. Haxton sends a man in motion. Now they go on the dive for Pedigo as he'll just fall forward close to midfield. He's got enough for the first down. It was second down and five. Pedigo picks up seven to the 49 yard line. I think they got a flag. Yep, legal shift on Hoisington. Big break. Well, that negates a first down carry and a gain of seven for Pedigo. And the second penalty on Hoisington for 10 yards, a total of 10 yards, and that goes back to the original line of scrimmage, the 42-yard line, so that four-yard scramble a moment ago by Haxton is erased on the five-yard penalty. As they're now second down and 10. Motion man Steinert, and they just run the same play this time to the left, and the football came free late. Monarchs tried to dive on it. Official on that sideline. So Monarchs say they've got it, and they do. So the Monarchs take advantage of a turnover on Hoisington. Pedigo had it poked away, and the first turnover will give the Monarchs a football to the Hoisington 39-yard line. Boy. Talk about what the doctor ordered coming up with a big play and a big turnover is a big hit in there in the middle. Couldn't see who it was. A lot of traffic in there, but the Monarchs jarred the ball loose and able to get the ball back with a short field for the offense to work with. 7.47 ago, Atherton and company was in on that play. Monarchs uh, will line up at the Hoisington 38-yard line. Harris hands it for Lang as... Uh, First carry of the contest goes for Lance Lang, the sophomore, inside the 35. So a pretty good game that time of five. Sets him up second down and five after the first carry for Lance Lang. Well, and Lance had a couple of nice carries in last week's ball game. Let's see if he gets uh, his hands on the ball a little more. Monarch to the, or rather Monarchs to the Hoisington 34 after the gain of five. Harris underneath center. They hand it off. It's the same play right side and falling forward close to the 30. They're, they're going to spot him right at the 31 is Lang. He'll pick up three. And it's third down and a short three after back-to-back -back carries that time for Lance Lang. Lance had carried it 10 times for 26 yards prior to those two carries on the season. And now Mark Rack, a wide receiver to the left as they go to the double tight eye formation on third down and three. Harris fakes the handoff. No, he will give it away and it's gonna be recovered by Hoisington. Miscommunication that time. I'm not sure if he meant to hand it off late or if he was gonna keep it around the right side, but just kind of lackadaisical with the football and Hoisington's Wyatt Pedigo will jump on it and get it right back after the Monarchs had run a couple of plays. And so 
they fumble it right back over on the Monarchs first turnover. Yeah, that's unfortunate. A little bit of an unforced error, like you said, just a communication issue maybe on that. Uh, not sure who was supposed to get the ball, maybe. Boisington quickly to the line of scrimmage. They're ready to go from their own 34-yard line following the turnover. Motion man, Monarch show blitz. Handoff underneath, and it's, it's Pedigo again, and he's just brought down after a gain of 13. He nearly took that one to the house as a shoestring tackle by the Monarch secondary nearly we had another big touchdown for Pedigo instead it's a gain of 13. Well, you see Hoisington coming out with a quick, uh, quick, quick to the ball, trying to take advantage of the momentum off the turnover, trying to catch the defense on their heels, and it works. So the Monarchs got to come, come strong right now. 97 yards on six carries for Pedigo, and it's another first down play action. Haxton looking to pass. He'll throw it over the middle, and it's incomplete to the flag. They were looking for Steiner at the wing back. He was battling with Lang and Cade Harris. Yeah, I think Harris is going to get called for the holding before the pass was thrown. Sway. Penalty, penalty, excuse me, on the Monarchs secondary. Other Hayes Kalon scoreboard update as we do get the holding penalty on the Monarchs. That'll be enough for a first down as they step it out. It's the fifth first down of this first half for Hoisington. And now the ball goes to the Monarch 43 yard line. After the penalty on the Monarchs. Hand off, nope, it'll be a keeper by Haxton as he makes a man miss and now he's got the corner with a flag coming in late inside the 30. Haxton will be wrestled down by Kate Harris and then Harris Looks like he's a little bit slow to get up. Might have turned that ankle around the 26 yard line and now we've got another Monarch down behind the play. So two Monarchs banged up on the play. Yeah, that's gonna be Lang. Lance Lang was down too, but he was able to get up. Chase is the one who's banged up now. And Harris as well. The gain would have been enough for a first down all the way to the 27 yard line. A gain of 15. Lance Lang does get up and walks to the sideline. He's walking under his own power, but being directed to the sideline. I'm taking a look at Cade's ankle. You can tell he's frustrated. Yeah, it looked like he turned it trying to bring Haxton down. He went up down awkwardly trying to pull Haxton down. Not putting a ton of pressure on that ankle, walking with a pretty good limp as trainers take a look at him. That was a gain of 15, close to 15 in the first down. I think they're going to negate that with a hold pin, uh, holding on Hoisington to the 38 yard line. Still have no signal from the Official, well, that's the call. So the holding penalty negates the first down carry. It's the third penalty for 20 yards. Well, that's a, a couple of times Hoisington's been downfield. They do do a good job of sustaining the block downfield, but a couple of times it looks like there was a pretty marginal that time they got caught for the hold. First down and long, ball will be moved back to the Hoisington 49 yard line. They'll face a first down at about 15. Two wide receivers left side, one to the right side as Haxton checks with the sideline. He'll settle underneath center, two backs behind him. Here's a Pass for Haxton, rolling to his left side to the 50. Now he's going to take off and run. He'll get across the original line of scrimmage and a huge gain downfield with another flag coming in. He's going to take it to the house for the 49-yard touchdown run. But there's going to be a hold at about the 19-yard line. Yeah, got a block in the back downfield. I could see it from this side. I didn't know if the official was going to pick it up, but they did. And another big penalty. Still going to have maybe a first down. The flag at the 19-yard line, so it'll officially be a 
28-yard gain, and then you get the, they actually called a hold. Axton was just able to tippy-toe along that sideline and stay in bounds somehow. The Monarchs didn't do a good job of tackling. It is enough for a first down. They're seventh here this first half. We've got 5.50 to go in this first half. It's 14-6. Hoisington with the lead, scored on a 38-yard screen pass from Haxton to Pedigo, and then Wyatt Pedigo capped off another long drive with a four-yard touchdown run. He is three yards shy of going over 100 yards in 14 straight contests. He lines up as a wingback this time. He'll go in motion to the left. They fake the pitch to him. Haxton rolling, and it's knocked down and then caught by Haxton. Haxton's trying to take off and run. He can't throw it again. He started to as he's going to be wrestled down. Good job by Garrett Pfeiffer to bring him down. That'll go as a pass completion to himself. Haxton is going to be tackled back at the 37 yard line he had it knocked away and then thought about throwing it again yeah it would have been a legal forward pass on the second one but uh i tell you what great effort great job just keeping his pursuit garrett pie for running him down from behind not an easy task as we've seen the speed he's shown a couple of times getting outside the pocket there was a loss of 11 on the catch for Haxton, and it's second down and long. They have to get inside the Monarch 19 yard line. Counter play ball on the field again, and it's picked up by Wyatt Pettigo at the 40. Back to the 41, they'll lose five more as Pettigo just dove on top of it. Nearly another turnover. They tried to run that little counter stuff in the backfield, and Pettigo. And Haxton not on the same page. Yeah, again, we've seen a couple of bobbles on the exchanges, but that time it hit the ground. Monarchs did a good job of getting in and getting the play stopped. That's a got to stop them here, third and long. Third down and 23. They've got to get it inside the Monarch 19-yard line. Haxton will keep it running off the right side. He's got a blocker out in front. He'll be knocked out of bounds and then side the 30 to the 27-yard line. So he picks up 13, still well shy of the line of gain or he's driven out of bounds laying and rack in there on the tackle and now it's fourth down and 10. so they do get him back to the original line of scrimmage it's fourth down yeah. monarchs need to get this turnover on downs right here they're going to take time out to talk about it we've got 423 to go in this first half, Hoisington is on top, 14 to six. Monarchs open the game, driving right down the field and scoring first on the one yard touchdown run for Kate Harris. Led six nothing at that point. That drive for the Monarchs took more than six minutes off the clock, but then Hoisington answered on their own seven play touchdown drive that was capped off by a 38 yard, 38 -yard pass from Haxon to Pedigo. Extra point put Hoisington on top seven to six. Better go out at a four yard touchdown run as well to put them on top by the 14 six score. Other scoreboard update for you. District game. Ellsworth on top of Minneapolis 14 to six. That's a uh, district game we mentioned earlier. And now Norton all over Phillipsburg in that second quarter, 21-7. The Blue Jays all over the defending 2A champs, 21-7. It's our Hayes Kalon scoreboard update. The green grass you won in the spring starts with spring in the fall by Hayes Kalon. Call Kirk Maskett, 623-0674. Kurt Viner, 623-0478. Here's a big fourth down play coming up. Three wide receiver split to the left side of the formation. Axton's just going to hand it off up the middle. Pedigo spun off of his own blocker, and he's going to have enough for the first down. They sent three wide receivers to the left in the marks. I don't think we're going to... It was right near that line of gain. I think he's got enough for the first down. He does. They're able to come back and get the first down. Pedigo with 102 yards now after a gain of 10 and the eighth first down of the first half for the Cardinals. Yeah, you can't think that they're going to throw it on fourth and long because they like, they like, like you said, spread them out and then just gashed them up the middle. Out of the 19 of the Monarchs, and we're going to get an equipment official timeout as he needs to tie his shoe here on the near sideline. Krause will be the wide receiver to the far side. 
Brewer to the near side. Three backs in the backfield. Motion man is Morris. Instead, it's a keeper by Haxton. He's wrapped up and he'll be pulled down. Good play up the front, uh, up the uh, front there by Garrett Pfeiffer from his down lineman position. He stops Haxton for a gain of one on the play. Yeah, Garrett doing a great job of, of just holding his own and not an easy play to make out there on the edge. Did a good job of getting him on the ground. Clock hits the 345 mark here in this first half. 14-6 in favor of the Hoisington Cardinals. They've got a wide receiver split to each side and three backs with Haxton underneath center again. Motion man is Steiner. It's in. It's Josh Ball off the left side. He gets the carry. Ball will get down to the 10. It's a gain of seven for Ball. Before he's brought down on the play for the Monarchs, Hale makes the tackle. Hale in there as well. Monarchs, or rather, uh, Josh Ball. He had eight carries a season high, 82 yards last week in their win over Larned. They kind of shift him as the fullback when they move Pedigo to one of the wingbacks in this three-back set. It's like they have now. Ball's the fullback in this three-back set. And Haxton's going to throw, looking right side for Pedigo, who is not going to make the catch. Overshot him in that right corner of the end zone. Third down and two after the incomplete pass. Yeah, they split him out that time. Pedigo started at the wide receiver and trying to find him in the back corner, a little fade pattern. Wasn't there. 2.52 to go here in this first half. Oisington on top here in this one, 14 to six. They've got a fourth down and two. All spotted at the 10. They have to get to the Monarch eight so they can still get a first down without scoring a touchdown. They've got plenty of room to do that here on a big fourth down. I'm guessing number 33. He's lined up at the fullback position right behind Hacks and Monarchs showing blitz from the corner and it'll be a handoff for Pedigo right side. He'll slip three tackles and get in for the touchdown. Pedigo from 10 yards out will score his second rushing touchdown of the contest. 112 yards now on nine carries. And with 2.47 to go here in this first half of action, Pedigo scores his third touchdown of the first half. Two on the ground, one through the air. Boisington takes a two-score lead at 20-6 to six as we await the extra point attempt. And the kick is on its way, and it is good. Hoisington will take a 21-6 lead with 2.47 to play here in this first half thanks to the touchdown drive and the touchdown from Pettigo. Yeah, 11 plays, 66 yards, and uh, just uh, another power run off tackle for Pettigo that the Monarchs unable to come up with an answer for here in this first half. They were facing third down and 23 and converted on that drive. Yeah, and one of them was a fourth and 10. Yep. <laughs> yeah. But they were able to uh, just run right up the middle with Pettigo and Monarchs just not, like we said, not having an answer for the big fullback from Hoisington tonight. Pettigo, a season ago against the Monarchs. Went for two touchdowns, 162 yards. He has two touchdowns, 112 yards here in this one this evening. Monarchs will get it back with lots of time left, 2.47 to go. Now, see if they play a little conservative or try to open it up. They've, they've had receivers down the field, and he's been able to find Lang a couple of times. And unfortunately, had the one penalty when he had Lang for an 18-yard game, but uh, it's been there for him. Mooney again has it teed up. He's going to kick it from our right to our left as they've done here in this third. And now here's an onside kick attempt. It hit one of the Monarch up men, and it's recovered at the 40-yard line by TMP. Pfeiffer was able to come away with it as Weston Pfeiffer came away with it. Not sure if it hit. I think it hit Garrett Pfeiffer. And then Weston recovered it at the 41-yard line. Not sure if that was by design or maybe just trying to squib kick it up the middle and it hit one of the blockers for TMP, but the Monarchs are going to have great field position if they'll start here at their own 41-yard line. And we've got 
2.45 to go here in this first half. Trying to run it right side and nowhere to go for Lang. Shooting through to make the play was the linebacker Cameron Schneewise. Yeah, that time they, a lot of penetration. Lang had found a little bit of room with a couple carries early, but that time there was nothing doing. Lance Lang, the sophomore, on his third carry of the contest, loses two. It's a third down and 12. Wide receiver to the left, two tight ends in the I formation for Harris. Harris is going to run the option, pitches it late for Lang. Lance trying to get to the sideline, and they spot him out of bounds. You see where they mark him, 40. So he'll pick up a yard on the play to the 40, and it's third down and 11. Yeah, we've seen the speed. These linebackers, uh, cornerbacks, side to side are pretty tough for this Hoisington defense. They're hard to beat to the edge. Yeah, Crawford make it Morris in on that tackle that time. Placing a third down and 11. Clock stops as he went out of bounds with 2.04 to go here in this first half. Gross, the junior wide receiver will be to the near side. Two tight ends on a third down and 11. Michael will go in motion, and they're going to fake the handoff. Harris trying to keep it here to the near side, and nowhere to go. He's going to lose yards back to the 36-yard line, and we're going to get a Hoisington timeout. Cole Steiner at the outside linebacker read it perfectly. Loss of four. It's fourth down at a long 14. Call it fourth, fourth and 15 facing the Monarchs. Yeah, again, that's Steiner. Has been tough on the edge all night. Ball there to help him out as well that time. But uh, after that first drive, the Monarchs again in trouble finding their rhythm on offense. 154 left here in this first half. Hoisington leads 21 to 6. They've got two timeouts left after that. One timeout taken by Hoisington. So you got to think that they're trying to put one more here in the end zone. So this will be. Huge stand needed defensively for the Monarchs because Hoisington also gets the football to start the second half. Yeah, this is a big punt. Need to swing the field position and see if they can find a way to stop the Hoisington offense. They cannot afford to give up points right now. Phillipsburg gets back on the board late in the second quarter. Norton leads Phillipsburg 21-14. Stay tuned for our Halftime interview with Fanceman Director Troy Ruta from TMP coming up a little bit later as Wetling from his own 25 takes the Colby Dryling snap and this one a sidewinder that'll bounce out of bounds at the Hoisington 36 yard line. Cardinals will have decent field position but a good kick by Wetling. And now with two timeouts, Hoisington will take over here from their own 36 yard line. And there's a minute 50 to play here in this first half. Washington's taken advantage of several big plays. Gains of 33, 40, 28, and 38 all so far in the contest. Two wide receivers left, one here to the near side as Haxton will go underneath center on first down and 10, looking to pass, trying to set up the screen. They'll lob it over the top. It's caught by Ball, and then Michael Hale meets him at the 38, and then he's swung down by Cade Harris. They give him forward progress to the 40, so a gain of four on the play that time. Yeah, well, that was a great job by Hale because he had that screen set up again, and that time, Hale recognized it. Did a great job of coming up and making play. Kate Harris coming in to help him finish off the play. Cross will be the wide receiver to the left. Ball at the 40-yard line. And we're going to get a TMP timeout, I think. Yep, so the Monarchs take the timeout. As Coach Harris and company want to talk things over here. And timeout comes with 113 to play in this first half. Hoisington again trying to put another touchdown on the board, leading 21 to six here in this first half. Ryan Pedigo has all three touchdowns in the contest for Hoisington, runs of 10, four, and a catch of 38 on a screen pass. Yeah, that's, he's just, 
you can always say he's a player to key on, but that's <laughs> not an easy key to stop. And his offensive line has done a really nice job. Blackwell, Boxberger, Mogo in the middle, Shane Weiss and Specht have really led the way. 112 yards for Pedigo, 53 for Haxton. Ball has nine yards rushing in this first half as well. Yeah, and this, uh, this is big right now. This Monarch defense has to find a way to keep him off the board. Second down and six, first down marker just across the Hoisington 45-yard line as they'll snap it inside the 40, and it off up the middle, and driving forward is Pedigo to the 46-yard line. That's enough for them to take a look at it. I think it is enough for a first down. It's, it's awful close. They'll say not quite enough for a first down, and then Haxton will spike, spike it here on third down and short, so they'll face a fourth down and short. Not sure uh, why they didn't stop and measure and a benefit at Hoisington. Not sure why they didn't. They actually spot him. They lost a yard on the spike. 46-yard <laughs> line. They're back to the 45. He had got close to the 46, so now it's fourth down. Not sure everybody was set when they snapped the football. Yeah, I didn't think so either. Ball from the 45, two wide receivers to each side. It's fourth down and one. Boisington is showing like they're going to punt the football with Brewer, and they do kick it away, or rather Haxton kicks it away, and it rolls inside the Monarch 20, still rolling inside the five and down to the three-yard line. So they decide to pooch kick it after some miscommunication with 53 seconds to go here in this first half. Monarchs get the football back, but they're pinned deep inside their own five yard line. And you gotta think that maybe they might just decide to try and keep it a couple times on the ground and go into the halftime break yeah, down 21 to six. Boisington, have they used just one timeout? Boisington has just used one timeout. So you gotta, Make sure you're falling forward here. Nothing but quarterback sneaks I don't think I would do. Rack will be the wide receiver to the left side as Harris underneath center. Shnewai showing blitz. They're going to hand it right side and getting to the line of scrimmage. Maybe trying to run off of that right side and then stacked up for no gain. And there's the Hoisington timeout. So Monarchs run it off that right side with Lance Lang. And with 45 seconds to go, another timeout taken by Hoisington gives them one. Yeah, it's ball control, ball possession right now. Got to secure it. Because they'll use one timeout if they get them stopped here, and then they're going to have to use some clock on that next play. 45 and a half seconds to go. Here in this first half, 21-6, 21 unanswered points scored by Hoisington after the Monarchs took a 6-0 lead. After that opening drive, they had a one-yard touchdown run. So one timeout remaining for Hoisington. So they can snap it one more time. They'll have to stop it one more time. And then on third down, if you get everything clean you think you could probably just finish the half on a on a run here a couple of runs or a, a run and a kneel down wide receiver be lined up to the right side of the formation dumped back to that eye formation here comes Schnee's wise on the blitz and it's another handoff just running right up the middle to the five yard line and with 39 seconds to go the timeout is taken as Colby Dryling gets the carry to the five, so we'll give him a couple of yards on that one. Schneewise makes the tackle, and there's Hoisington's final timeout of the first half. Monarchs took the lead, felt good about that opening drive in which they covered 15 plays and 70 yards. It was capped out by the one yard Kate Harris touchdown run, but then Wyatt Pettigo was able to haul in a screen pass. So they were able to convert on that third down that resulted in a touchdown that capped off the three-play three, uh, three play 42 yard touchdown or the make of the seven-play 80-yard touchdown. They then scored following a TMP punt on a four-yard touchdown run for Pedigo. Pedigo on that drive had a run of 
33 yards. I had a run of uh, 40 yards of 33 yards and then the four yard touchdown run. So 39.3 seconds to go here in this first half. 21-6 favor of the Hoisington Cardinals. They are all out of timeouts. So third down facing the Monarchs. So I'll come out on the double tight formation again. One on receiver to the right. And the high formation from their own five. Harris with Hoisington showing blitz. He's going to hand it off. And then the ball came free. And it came free late. Monarchs just do get back on it inside the one yard line. Why is the clock stopped? With 35 seconds to go, they stopped the clock. And so, Monarchs do get the football back at about the half yard line and they shouldn't have to snap it again. 20 seconds to go here in this first half and they reset the clock with 25 seconds. So the Monarchs will not have to snap the football again here in this first half. 21 unanswered points by Hoisington after the Monarchs took a six nothing lead and the Cardinals go into the halftime break leading 21 to six of the TMP Marion Monarchs. It's week four of the high school football season. As the Monarchs trail 21 six at halftime to the Hoisington Cardinals on the Monarch Sports Network service by Dave's Honor Repair is your ultimate business partner. We provide business class phone with customizable features and fast, reliable internet. Your knowledgeable team at Technology Solutions has a broad base of IT services to meet your needs. Let the experts at Marketing Solutions get your message to the right people on the best platforms. The only piece missing is your business. Call Eagle Communications today at 877-61-EAGLE. Glad to see you're back. These are my favorite shorts, and I have no idea what I got on them. Mm. It's just peanut butter. We can get that out. Master Cleaners and Hayes offers a variety of services, including dry cleaning, alterations, laundry, tuxedo rentals, and free pickup and delivery. It's time to explore the great indoors. Grandpa, you know how to play this game? Where snacks are shared with smiles. Really? Another romantic comedy, Sarah? And family time comes first. Movie night is my favorite night. Explore the great indoors with Eagle Communications with TV and Internet starting at $84.99 for two years. Thank you. Choosing to style classic quality body shop. Classic Quality Body Shop has had the pleasure of serving this area since 1984. Much like a sports team, Shelton and his team have worked hard, grown together, and followed the playbook of taking care of customers to become one of the most highly regarded body shops in the area. Support your local team, whether on the field or when choosing who you do business with. Thank you, thank you for choosing to style At Classic Quality Body Shop. See their ad in the next tech directory. Wi-Fi. It should work anywhere in your home. Introducing Boost, the cutting-edge Wi-Fi solution that makes dead zones history. Boost starts with a dual-band modem and router with greater range than ever. Access points can be added anywhere there's a cable outlet to create more wired connections and stronger Wi-Fi to power all your family's devices in all the places you love to live. Learn more at eaglecom.net or call today and add the power of Boost to your Wi-Fi. Lifetime Dental Care is devoted to helping you, your family, and friends achieve your healthiest and brightest smile. They are now accepting new patients. Call 625-7969 to schedule your appointment. They know every person's dental needs are unique, and that is why they offer you a comprehensive selection of treatment options in a comfortable and caring atmosphere. Dr. Lowe and his dental team want you to enjoy your visit. Lifetime Dental Care, accepting new patients. Call 625-7969 or see them at lifetimedentalcare.com. Good morning. Everyone in Hayes says you can clean anything, so can you get this tough stain out? Great jelly, we can get that out. Wow, you guys really are good. Master. 
Master Cleaners and Hayes offers a variety of services including dry cleaning, alterations, laundry, tuxedo rentals, and free pickup and delivery. Hi, I'm Gary Shorman, President and CEO of Eagle Communications, a 100% employee-owned company. I'd like to personally thank you for selecting Eagle for your internet, television, and telephone service. By choosing Eagle, you're choosing to keep your dollars local with a company that reinvests back in your community. Let's make this a great year for your community. Check us out at eaglecom.net. Eagle Communications, our community connected. High School Sports on Eagle TV brought to you by Service Master Clean. From the major accidents to the minor incidents, Service Master Clean of Hayes, Corey, Pam, and the entire staff support the efforts of Hayes High and TMP. Insurance planning, insurance for the way you work and live, for business, home, and family. Value the price, remember the service. Insurance planning, IPI financial services, and agro crop insurance. Thirsties, before or after the game, the best place for a hungry family, team, or individual is on North Vine and Hayes. It's Thirsties Brew Pub and Grill. Check out their all-time favorites and new items on the menu, too. Patty Bacon Rind Appraising, the lead provider of real estate valuations for the mortgage lending marketplace. With many years of experience, they have a proven track record. Contact Patty Bacon Rind today. Next Tech Wireless. They are the avid supporters of local high school athletic programs and have sponsored numerous high school events. They are committed to serving the communities they're in. Steel Fabrications. At Steel Fabrications, they know how to do it right. They also support local school athletes in all they do. Paul Wurtenberger Construction. Designing and building residential and commercial. Building dreams for over 30 years. Paul Wurtenberger Construction. TMP Marion Alumni. Through the dedication of students, parents, teachers, and alumni members, the focus is on Christian values and community awareness. TMP Marion, McDonald's of Hayes, Russell, and Waukini. A great place to go for you or the team on your way home from the game. McDonald's, supporting local academic and sporting activities. Hey Chevrolet, they have a huge selection of brand new Chevy cars, trucks, vans, SUVs, and a great selection of pre-owned vehicles. See them online at HayesChevrolet.com. NCK Tech, no matter what life you're trying to create, NCK Tech is here to help build a strong foundation. They are the local supporter of community events. Classic Quality Body Shop. They've been serving customers for over 33 years, so you know they have to be doing something right. Classic Quality Body Shop. Phase 2, always supporting local athletics. If you need quick printing of logos or designs on shirts, Phase 2 can handle any of your requests. They have you covered at Phase 2. Leon's Welding. Welding, fabrication, sandblasting, powder coating, even a fleet of mobile welding trucks. Supporting local school activities for over 30 years. Leon's Welding and Fabrication. Eagle Broadband. Eagle Broadband is your trusted internet, TV, and phone provider. They offer many scalable, forward-thinking solutions such as commercial services, managed IT, and marketing solutions for businesses of all sizes. Eagle Broadband. Eagle Communications is your ultimate business partner. We provide business class phone with customizable features and fast, reliable internet. Your knowledgeable team at Technology Solutions has a broad base of IT services to meet your needs. Let the experts at Marketing Solutions get your message to the right people on the best platforms. The only piece missing is your business. Call Eagle Communications today at 877-61-EAGLE. Glad to see you're back. These are my favorite shorts and I have no idea what I got on them. It's just peanut butter. We can get that out. Master Cleaners and Hayes offers a variety of services, including dry cleaning, alterations, laundry, tuxedo rentals, and free pickup and delivery. It's time to explore the great indoors. Grandpa, you know how to play this game? Where snacks are shared with smiles. Really? Another romantic comedy, Sarah? And family time comes first. Movie night is my favorite night. Explore the great indoors with Eagle Communications with TV and Internet starting at $84.99 for two years. Thank you. Thank you. Oh,
choosing to stop at Classic Quality Body Shop. Classic Quality Body Shop has had the pleasure of serving this area since 1984. Much like a sports team, Shelton and his team have worked hard, grown together, and followed the playbook of taking care of customers to become one of the most highly regarded body shops in the area. Support your local team, whether on the field or when choosing who you do business with. Thank you, thank you for choosing to stop at Classic Quality Body Shop. See their ad in the next tech directory. Wi-Fi. It should work anywhere in your home. Introducing Boost, the cutting-edge Wi-Fi solution that makes dead zones history. Boost starts with a dual-band modem and router with greater range than ever. Access points can be added anywhere there's a cable outlet to create more wired connections and stronger Wi-Fi to power all your family's devices in all the places you love to live. Learn more at eaglecom.net or call today and add the power of Boost to your Wi-Fi. Lifetime Dental Care is devoted to helping you, your family, and friends achieve your healthiest and brightest smile. They are now accepting new patients. Call 625-7969 to schedule your appointment. They know every person's dental needs are unique, and that is why they offer you a comprehensive selection of treatment options in a comfortable and caring atmosphere. Dr. Lowe and his dental team want you to enjoy your visit. Lifetime Dental Care, accepting new patients. Call 625-7969 or see them at lifetimedentalcare.com. Good morning. Everyone in Hay says you can clean anything, so can you get this tough stain out? Grape jelly, we can get that out. Wow, you guys really are good. Master Cleaners in Hayes offers a variety of services, including dry cleaning, alterations, laundry, tuxedo rentals, and free pickup and delivery. Hi, I'm Gary Shorman, President and CEO of Eagle Communications, a 100% employee-owned company. I'd like to personally thank you for selecting Eagle for your internet, television, and telephone service. By choosing Eagle, you're choosing to keep your dollars local with a company that reinvests back in your community. Let's make this a great year for your community. Check us out at eaglecom.net. Eagle Communications, our community, connected. Hi, I'm Gary.
Scored 21 unanswered points in the uh, first and second quarters and lead the TMP Marion Monarchs 21 to 6 as we welcome you back into Hoisington and uh, we were a few moments away from kicking off the uh, second half but uh, we don't have any stadium lights on the near sideline only on the visitor side so we're in a little bit of a delay. Jonathan Sager, Dave Barber back with you here from Hoisington. Monarchs jumped down to that big lead, 6-0 early, Dave, and they put together that really long touchdown drive and had the momentum, but Hoisington seized it back right away, and then I was able to go on a 21 in and answered scoring spree. Yeah, that 15-play drive to start the game, and after that they went three plays a punt, four plays a punt, three plays a punt, three plays a punt, and then three plays in halftime. And, so they've got to get out of that three play and out out mode in this second half. And I think really um, this first drive of the second half is going to be extremely crucial. Either way you look at it, they've got to find a way to come up with a stop. Boisington gets the football to start the second half after winning the toss. And again, dealing with a little bit of a light issue is uh, it's a little dark out there. So... Uh, so waiting on them, trying to get that figured out. Real quickly, we can get you Hayes Kalon scoreboard update. While we wait at halftime, Hayes and Garden City in a whack showdown was tied at 20. Norton led Phillipsburg at last check, 21-14 at halftime. Still don't have an update on that. That was right before halftime. They're well ahead of us, so they've already started the second half. We'll try and get you an update on that as we go along. Another district game, Ellsworth led Minneapolis at halftime 14 to 12, or late in the second quarter. Uh, never did get a halftime score on that one either. We'll check real quick. Actually, it was 14 to 12 at halftime uh, with the lead for Ellsworth. Lacrosse leading Ellis 20 to nothing at halftime. Smith Center on top of Plainville 14-7 at the break. Goodland leading Oakley 7 nothing at the uh, first half break as well. And Concordia led Russell 20 to 14. That's our Hayes Kalon scoreboard update. And so. We're still waiting on them to fix some lights here. Our uh, update brought to you by Hayes Kalon. The green grass you want in the spring starts with spring in the fall by Hayes Kalon. Call Kirk Mask at 623-0674. Kirk Viner at 623-8427. We'll follow along with some of the scores as we continue on here from Hoisington and our Herman Physical Therapy halftime show. We got an extended halftime. We appreciate Troy Rudy joining us as part of our halftime show. The advancement director at TMP talking about all the good things they've got going on. We also got a happenings at TMP is checking in on some activities. Everybody uh, getting into the festivities now with the uh, <laughs> light banks on the near sideline still not working. So we have a little bit of a delay. We can get you some numbers from the first half. TMP finished with 74 yards of offense in that first half, 39 through the air as Cade Harris completed two of three for 39 yards. Had one completion to Jace Wentling for seven, the other one of 32 to Lance Lang. On the ground, Harris officially with 12 carries for five yards. He was sacked and a loss of eight. So he has five yards on the ground. Kobe Dryling, 10 carries, 25 yards. Lance Lang, six carries, five yards. Hoisington, meanwhile, their team numbers, 217 total, 186 on the ground, 31 yards through the air. Wyatt Pedigo unofficially had him for 122 yards on 10 carries. He had a 10-yard touchdown, a four-yard touchdown run. Quarterback Mason Haxton carried it five times for 53 yards. Cole Steiner carried it twice for two yards. Josh Ball, one carry, make it two carries for seven yards in the contest as well. So still dealing with a light issue here at Hoisington in Brown Stadium, so while we get that figured out, um, we uh, are just kind of hanging out at this point, <laughs> waiting on uh, the lights to come back on on the near sideline. 
Ooh, crowd's gotten into it with a little dance and a little song going on. <laughs> but, but it'd be nice to get the lights back on. Yeah, we're trying to keep an eye on some weather down south as well. So we're hoping we can get uh, rolling here to start this third quarter. 21-6, our lead at halftime for Hoisington. Mentioned this is a key district game. It's second year in a row that Hoisington and TMP have started out district play together. I think we might have had them on for a minute, but then we had a, another disappointing effort as they went off again. So we're still kind of just hanging out. Yeah, I guess we got a report from the fans on the far side. We had... Put four players down to start this game. Marcus Slickery evidently out in the first half now has a broken hand as well. So Monarchs going through some issues. We'll uh, keep it on an eye on that as well. Kind of thin on that offensive line. So we'll keep an eye on that. Hopefully we're going to start this third quarter before too long. While they try and get it figured out, I guess we'll step aside for a quick break if we can. Maybe take a minute time out here and see if we can figure it out. Again here at halftime, it is 21 to six in favor of Hoisington. Mentioned some other halftime scores. We can get you those here in just a second. Uh, we'll run through those real quickly again for you. Garden and Hayes High tied at 20. That was at halftime. Norton led Phillipsburg at halftime, 21-14. Uh, Ellsworth uh, leading Minneapolis, 14-12. That is a district game with the uh, Monarchs and Hoisington and Phillipsburg and Norton in district as well. So those two district games, lacrosse leading Ellis 20 to nothing. That was at the break. Plainville and Smith Center battled the top two teams in the Mid-Continent League. It was 14-7. Smith Center with the lead at the break. Goodland over Oakley, 7-0. Goodland still looking for their first win of the season. And uh, Concordia leading Russell 20-14. Let's go ahead and step aside for a quick break. We'll come back. Hopefully we'll get this second half started as we deal with a light issue here on the near sideline. 21-6. We're still waiting to start our second half here from Hoisington on the Monarch Sports Network, serviced by Dave's Auto Repair. Classic Quality Body Shop has had the pleasure of serving this area since 1984. Much like a sports team, Shelton and his team have worked hard, grown together, and followed the playbook of taking care of customers to become one of the most highly regarded body shops in the area. Support your local team, whether on the field or when choosing who you do business with. Thank you, thank you for choosing the style of Classic Quality Body Shop. See their ad in the next tech directory. Good morning. Everyone in Hayes says you can clean anything. So can you get this tough stain out? Great jelly, we can get that out. Wow, you guys really are good. Master Cleaners in Hayes offers a variety of services including dry cleaning, alterations, laundry, tuxedo rentals, and free pickup and delivery. This is Eagle TV. We're coming back. Welcome back into Hoisington again. We're still at halftime. We uh, have some lighting issues here at the field in Hoisington. And so we are still trying to get that figured out with the lights on the home side out. We have a couple of banks of lights out. So we are kind of in a holding pattern, I guess, as of now. Still waiting for the officials. They said they were trying to reset the lights. They had them kicked on for a second, but went right back out. So 
Unfortunately, we're just kind of playing hurry up and wait. 21-6 in favor of the Hoisington Cardinals here at halftime. If the second half ever does get started here, it's Hoisington with the football to start out this second half. Monarch defense after holding Plainville well below their season averages and season high is a week ago, struggling a little bit with this rushing attack from Hoisington. And Dave, we talked about in the pregame show that Pedigo, what he did last year, over 160 60 yards, two touchdowns, that he's really the focal point of this offense. 567 yards coming in, second most in all of two way. And it's just proving to be a tough challenge to bring down for the Monarchs on defense. Yeah, we talked about some of the players that were out, and I think they, they showed up in that first half, you know, missing Rich Meyer and, and Saib, you know, with the run support. Uh, the kids have done a pretty good job, but he's he's a hard man to contain. I mean, they, by far, I think the best we've seen uh, this year, uh, no question. But I've been surprised by the overall team, team speed of Hoisington. I mean, on defense, they are extremely quick and, and fast to the ball. So see what the Monarchs can come up with, uh, uh, what kind of halftime adjustments they'll make, and see if they have a way to slow them down. It's not going to be easy. Well, and you like also – they were able to make some adjustments after the Monarchs drove right down the field and scored. And, and again, it took them, you know, 15 plays after a really nice drive they put together. We were able to convert on a fourth down. And it, it seemed like uh, they have really made the adjustment. The Monarch offense could never really find their rhythm again. Yeah, and it, uh, you got to, you know, kind of just tip your hats to them because they, they didn't really have an answer on that first drive. Monarchs just kind of methodically pushed it right down the field a, you know a six minute plus drive and boy that that's what you want and you, you saw what it did it kept him off the field and and uh, looked like a, as good a start as the monarchs could have but like you said after that there was not much that they could find to to work in zero it's still at halftime here from hoisington they're dealing with uh, some lighting issues on this near sideline We've got the lights on the far sideline on the visitor side, but the lights on the near side, and I'm not sure if it's just one light stanchion or if it's more than one. <laughs> Unfortunately, we can't see because it's right above us. I, I know there's one bank of lights that's out, and that is to that northeast of the field, and so that's really kind of made that area dark over there on the Hoisington sideline. The head official's trying to, I think, get this thing going again. But so far, no luck on trying to get anything started. So again, here downtime, it's 21-6 in favor of Hoisington. Dealing with some lights. I was going to say we had a, a mock cheer because I think they started to turn back <laughs> on, but then turned back off again. <laughs> <laughs> crowd down in front of us continues to have a good time as they're I guess trying to make uh, restaurant restaurant quality lemonade out of lemons <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is uh, unfortunately a bad time to have a, a little bit of a light delay so we're still at halftime offensively take can kind of talk more here and extend it halftime a little bit about the Monarch offense, Dave, and, you know, we talked about them driving down the field, like the the look from the, the spread. They, they've spread Hoisington out, but really ran the football, relied a lot on uh, Colby Dryling and uh, Kate Harris early. We saw Lance Lang carry the football a little bit, but then Kate went to the air a couple of times, and Hoisington did drop a, a sure what would have been interception, but he had a big play and in fact had a play called back too is because the man was downfield. So you like what you've seen a little bit from the passing attack of the young freshman. Yeah, he had Lance Lang a couple of times. Like you said, the one got called back. I think it was about an 18-yard pickup that got called back by penalty and then the long pass play where Lang almost got to the end, end zone, got him out on the three-yard line, but uh, that timing on that pass was perfect. As Lang broke over the middle, he hit him in stride, and it was nice to see him step into a pass like that. And, and uh, you know, a couple of good things to take away from that first half. They just got to find a way to put something together here. And unfortunately, a little bit, too, of the 
demons of the, the past kind of reared their ugly head at times. Too many penalties that were drive killers. Again. Yeah, and, and crucial times. It just yeah. seems like they happen at the wrong time, and uh, uh, which I guess when is a good time for a penalty to happen. But but just it, like you said, it was just huge plays that got taken away, and then they had to kick the ball away. Extended time on our Herman Physical Therapy halftime show Herman Physical Therapy you'll see your therapist each and every time and they make PT fun 21-6 the halftime score here from Hoisington dealing with light outage on the near sideline and so we don't know how soon we're going to be able to go or if we're going to be able to go here in the <laughs> second half or not. Uh, that official was trying to get this thing rolling, but uh, we're still waiting on that, the crews to, to figure out the lights. We saw them flash on a couple of times, and then they went right back off. Now the officials, two head coaches, Zach Baird, Coach Harris, for the Monarchs are standing on the field and everybody trying to decide what we're going to do. We need a, a competent electrician to maybe get us going again here. Somebody to these lights figured out so we can play. So we still haven't started our second half. I hope to get scoreboard update for you again because we're not going anywhere in the near term <laughs> smith center now on top of plainville 21 to 7. that's a big one that's a, knew that was going to be a big game yeah battle the two top teams in 1a 1 and 2 smith center and plainville respectively cardinals without uh, their leading rusher and you know, the Monarchs, that was a, a physical game a week ago. Monarchs lose Carson Jacobs for a couple of weeks. Ryan Richmeyer banged up. He's out for the year. Bryce Seib could be out for a while. Uh, he's out a little bit. Jared Casey breaks his hand and is out for a while as well. That was a, a physical game last week at Lewisfield Stadium. Yeah, it really was one of the most physical games I've seen in a while. Both sides really went at each other. And, uh unfortunately that's that's a cost and what happens in football sometimes but uh, tough break for the monarchs with uh, what we've mentioned they've missed with those players on the field tonight continue on with our halftime show take a look at uh, some more scores on our hayes kalon scoreboard update last check goodland now with a two touchdown lead over oakley 14 nothing um, elsewhere tonight, scores of note, trying to just update you on some teams. How about uh, Central Plains? They fall 48-0 to Little River tonight. Victoria all over Lincoln, 70-18. Scores of Kansas helping us out with scores across the state tonight. So no... Uh, other scores of note for you. We'll try and get the Hayes high score. They were tied with Garden City at halftime, 20 all. Only because it's uh, just down the road of note. Dodge City leads Great Bend, 21 nothing. Great Bend just down the road here in Hoisington. Uh, that game is, I believe, at Dodge City. Either way, Western Athletic Conference matchup. We're still at halftime here on our Herman Physical Therapy Halftime Show in which the Hoisington Cardinals are on top, 21-6, to and we all just kind of stand around and hope that somebody can figure out how to turn the lights back on. Here at Hoisington. Oh, it is getting a little lighter. They must have them warming up anyway. Every time we think they're going to come back on, they go back out. So. <laughs> don't want to, don't want to jinx it, I guess. Yep. So still, not sure how much longer we're going to be. 
really no word. The only word we got was we're going to try and reset them and turn them back on. That was two times ago. We're at the point now where maybe here at halftime we can take another break along the way here on the Monarch Sports Network. Why don't we do that? Uh, we need to take a minute break as they mull around and look to see they can figure out where we are in this light situation. Let's take another minute break along the network. So we're back in one minute on the Monarch Sports Network, service by Dave's Auto Repair. Classic Quality Body Shop has had the pleasure of serving this area since 1984. Much like a sports team, Shelton and his team have worked hard, grown together, and followed the playbook of taking care of customers to become one of the most highly regarded body shops in the area. Support your local team, whether on the field or when choosing who you do business with. Thank you, thank you for choosing the style of Classic Quality Body Shop. See their ad in the next tech directory. Good morning. Everyone in Hayes says you can clean anything. So can you get this tough stain out? Grape jelly, we can get that out. Wow, you guys really are good. Master Cleaners in Hayes offers a variety of services including dry cleaning, alterations, laundry, tuxedo rentals, and free pickup and delivery. This is Eagle TV. Still here at halftime from Hoisington. No word on where we are. Still dealing with the light issue. Here from Hoisington, they put three minutes back on the clock. I think we might try and go here. Both teams are warming up again. So real quick, we'll get you a quick reset. Uh, Monarchs take a 6-0 lead thanks to a one-yard Kate Harris touchdown run there in that first quarter on the opening drive. Oisington answers with 21 unanswered. Ryan Pettigo with 38-yard touchdown reception on a screen from Mason Haxton. He scores from four yards out as Pettigo scores from 10 yards out. And it's 21-6 in favor of Hoisington. We went to the break at 21-6. And now we have lights out on the football field and so we've been trying to uh kill time for the last few minutes <laughs> so uh they sent them both to their sides to maybe start warming up and put three more minutes on the clock which usually signals that warm-up time so not sure if they're maybe gonna decide to just go with it that one light bank out or the one group of lights that is out is on the Hoisington side, which is the home side. That's the north, and it's the far east corner. So it's kind of in that corner. It's not super dark. It's got a little bit lighter, as Dave mentioned earlier. So I think they might be trying to come on. Might have got part of them on. We can't see because it's in a bad spot for us. So um, real quickly, we can get you a scoreboard update brought to you by Hayes Kalon. Smith Center kind of taking control there. Uh, that is in Smith Center. They're kind of taking control. Six and a half to go in the third quarter. They lead Plainville 28-7. They're kind of wearing down the Cardinals a little bit there in that mid continent League matchup. 21-12, uh, Ellsworth leading Minneapolis. Ellsworth trying to get to 4-0. So the Bearcats, one of the surprise teams in Class 2A. Studio producer and engineer Rachel Fox hoping us out with a... Uh, Hayes, Scott, uh, Hayes High score. Garden City leads Hayes High 27 to 26. That was tied at 20 at halftime. So that's just some of the scores. Through three, Lacrosse leads Ellis 34 to 14. 
the second year in a row which those two teams will play each other. Which is that odd scheduling thing that they decided to do and even kind of looking to the future. Ellis will be 2A next year, so they potentially could be in the similar district with TMP, but meanwhile, lacrosse is going to play eight-man next year, so those two programs going in opposite directions a little bit. I think we're going to go. It does look like it's a, a light starting to come back on over there, so we're about ready to get this one back underway here at halftime. 21-6 in favor of the Hoisington Cardinals as we appreciate you hanging on for our extended halftime show. Hoisington with that 21-6 lead will get the football to start the third quarter as we are finally about ready to get this one underway. If my calculation's right, that was about a 20 minute delay. We'll have to look for sure because of the light issue. TMP has it teed up. Jason Whitling has it at the 40. And so we're about ready to get this second half underway as Whitling will put a foot into this one, kick it from the west to the east. And on the run, Mason drops it. It'll roll inside the five as he'll have to pick it up and just try and make something out of nothing. And he does a pretty good job of getting across the 15 up to the 19 yard line as Cade Mason, the junior, had to go through his hands. And the Monarchs defense will take the football field here to start out this third quarter needing to get a stop as Hoisington will have some of their worst field position of the ball game at their own 19 yard line yeah Monarch defense really needs to come up with a couple of plays and really not give them up, give up much field position at all here to start this half this is Big moment in this ball game. Hoisington sends wide receivers to each side. They're all the way outside the numbers. And then two backs in the backfield. As Mason Haxton will hand it off for the first carry for Wyatt Pettigo in this second half goes to the 30. He picks up 11. It's enough for a first down as Jason Whitling brought him down. But Pettigo on one carry picks up 11 and another first down, their 10th of the game. That young man has a motor. Those legs just keep turning and he gets low to the ground. Uh, I mean, he looked like he was running about two feet off the ground that time and picked up an extra three, four yards. Wentling, who had 13 tackles coming into this one, saves a touchdown. And now the Monarchs will load the box. Motion man, instead, they will give it to the left side and a huge run. This is a big run for Cole Steiner up the left side as he'll get into Monarch territory. And Steiner is going to be brought down by Wentling at the TMP 38 yard line. It's a first down carry as Steiner with his first carry of the second half rips off a big one all the way to the TMP 38 yard line. It's a gain of 28 and a first down. Yeah, I think it's Garrett Piper on the other side over there that got in there. Almost looked like he got a hand on the pitch. And then, at, but but he missed it, and there was out, nobody left on the outside. That is the 12th, the first down of the game for Hoisington. Here's a little counter play. Hunter Morris running inside, and he will get to the 30-yard line. They have gains of nine, or make it a gain of 11, a gain of 20, and now a gain of eight to start the third quarter. Yeah, that is not the way the Monarchs wanted to start this, but... Again, it looks like that big offensive line and, and uh, pounding running backs are starting to really take their toll. Second down at eight, ball to the Monarch 30 yard line. It took him just three plays to get here. Brewer will be the wide receiver to the left side. In fact, they have two, Morris out there as well. Two backs in the backfield. As Haxon will go underneath center on second down and two, pitching right side for Pettigo. He's got blockers out in front. Pettigo to the 20, he'll slip a tackle to the 10. Pettigo will angle in for the Hoisington touchdown. Aya Pettigo scores from 30 yards out, his third rushing touchdown of the contest, 163 yards for Pettigo on 12 carries at Hoisington. Puts another long touchdown on the board as Pettigo and company will go up by the score of 27 nothing with 10 or 27 to six rather with 10 17 to play in this third quarter. It Pettigo's didn't take him long to move four plays 81 yards and 
That was a flash. And the extra points is good. And Oisington takes the 28 to six lead thanks to the third rushing touchdown by Pettigo, his fourth touchdown of the contest. This one from 30 yards out. Dave mentioned four plays, 81 yards. Runs of 11, 30, 20, and eight on that drive. Yeah, they, they just came out and just completely <clears throat> took over the line of scrimmage and, and uh, Monarchs, again, could not find an answer to slow them down as this offense has been going downhill since the first quarter. Washington leading 28 to six in this third quarter. Monarchs coaching staff Talking, a couple of the Monarch coaches are talking to one of the officials on the near sideline. The rest of the Monarch coaches, including Coach Harrison, pulled the group together. A lot of time left here in this one, and a chance to answer and drive right back down the field. Monarchs in this third co quarter will go from our right to our left. It's the west to the east, So we said behind the Hoisington sideline here in this district contest. Mooney ready to kick it to Harris and Whitling as they stand close to each other and then switch positions as it will be taken by Jace Whitling inside the 20. Jace is going to bring it to the Hoisington side. A stiff arm across the 30 then got spun out of bounds at the 31 yard line. Got thrown out on that sideline and the Monarchs will have it at their own 31 yard line to start out their first drive of the second half. Down 28 to six with 10 10 to go here in this third quarter. Well, that is one thing the Monarchs have enjoyed more so than the first three games is the field position. They've started pretty much outside the 30 with every drive with the exception of the end drive where they got a punt down inside the three yard line. Jason Lance Lang will split to the right side, two to the near side as Harris will work out of the shotgun on first and 10. Jason Lang goes in motion. Harris looked to pass. Now he pulls it down. He'll throw it late over the middle. He's got his man. It's Lance Lang to the 41, 42 yard line. It's a first down as he's pulled down on the play by Mason, but not before he picks up 12 on a first down to move the chains. Well, again, a good adjustment by the freshman. Harris got outside the pocket, kept his eyes downfield, and again, Lance Lang been finding the open spots in the secondary, made himself available. Nice catch and nice pickup on first down for the Monarchs. He's got his first two catches of the season here in this game. He had no receptions a year ago. As now Jace Lang will go in motion on first down and 10. They're just going to lead rush with it left side and nowhere to go for the quarterback. And then he got thrown down late by Dallin Hutchcraft. Harris loses two to the 40-yard line. Yeah, they've been trying to get to the edge all night. And this <laughs> Cardinal defense, we talked about the speed at the halftime break. They, they continue to show it, and they get a lot of players on the edge. There was absolutely... Nothing Harris could do with that. Their backers aren't big by any means. Pedigo's the big one at 6'1", 215. But you look, Schneewise is 5'8", 181 pounds. Cole Steinert, 155 pounds. He's the one who sets the edge. Jordan, uh, Jacob Specht, rather, right around six foot, 168 pounds. They're not very big. As here's a quick pitch left side as Dryling is going to be hit and thrown down. And the Monarchs have gone backwards on the last two plays. Is key, uh, but we dryling slow to get up yeah, here he on the near sideline. He got slammed down pretty hard again. Ball coming through there, making a play. And after a big first down pickup with a nice pass to move the chains, they're set behind again, third and 15. Back to the 38 yard line to pick up their fifth first drive or first down of the, the game. They only had four first downs a year ago. So Harris will go empty on third down and long out of the shotgun. Hoisington showing blitz. Dryling goes in motion. Here's a quick pass left side and over the top. Trying to hook up left side with Jace Whitling and it's incomplete. And now fourth down and 14. This is the second time that Harris has been off the mark. 
going to call. Oh, well, they do call it on the Monarchs. So there was a penalty on the Monarchs. I think Boisington will decline it and take the result of the play an incomplete pass. Just talking it over. A block in the back of the Monarchs. I don't know if that was Dryling who was trying to come back on a little crack back here to the left side. Either way, it's in uh, declined and incomplete, and it's fourth down. Harris is four of five, or make it three of five for 51 yards. Welling ready to punt this one away again following the one first down. Here's a good kick from Wentling that'll bounce inside the 30 and roll down to about the 16-yard line. Washington will take over with by far their worst position, uh, field position in this one. Monarchs do get a first down, but forced to punt. So their last five of their last six drives have ended by a fumble or a punt. They had the half end one of their drives as well. Washington take over at their own 16 yard line, 8.02 to play here in this third quarter. And they run it, trying to bounce left side and Josh Ball with a flag in on the play. Maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage, Jace Lang in on the tackle. We'll see what the flag is from the official. It's holding on Hoisington. Ball had nowhere to go that time. Lang made a great play. He's playing outside linebacker. They have shifted some guys around. Lucas Krausen on that defensive line now. He's at the nose guard position. Lang got the started outside linebacker. He slid down. Mark Rack playing the Lone safety in this one after that penalty. Will Mark Hoisington back inside their 10. And here's a pitch left side. Trying to get to the corner with a head of steam. And there he goes. Here's a huge game. It's a foot race to midfield. Monarch slants Lang trying to track down Hunter Morris to the 20. And he'll be shoved down. What a huge effort by Lance Lang. He will save a touchdown to the five yard line. Boisington was inside their five at about the three-yard line. And Lance Lang saved what will end up going down as a 93-yard run for Hunter Morris. Man, Lance Lang covered a lot of territory as he came from the near side across the field and chased him down. I mean, that was a huge play for Hoisington, but it uh, saved, a, at least temporarily saved a touchdown. 93 yards for Hunter Morris, 28-6, and chance to go in for more for Hoisington. Three backs behind Haxton. They'll send a man in motion. They fake the pitch, hand it to the fullback, and right up the middle, touchdown, Hoisington. As yes, they're able to get it right up the middle to the fullback. And it was Ball that time. Yeah, it was Josh Ball on the carry as he scores from three yards out. His first touchdown of this one. Washington on top, 34 to six with 7.35 to play in the third. Just after the holding penalty on first down, just two plays to cover 84 yards. On for the extra points. That is good. 35 to 6. Washington with the lead. That touchdown for Ball. From three yards out. And Ball gets his first rushing touchdown of the season. Washington continues to take advantage of the big play. Yeah, had him pinned deep after the penalty. Had him inside their 10 yard line and then in one play later, they're on the other five yard line. So yeah, just a huge play given up by the Monarch defense and 
you know, we knew coming in that this was going to be probably the toughest game on their schedule this year, and it's proven to be that. This uh, Hoisington team pretty legit. They uh, are going to be a tough contender in this district and what looks like maybe a deep playoff run. <laughs> the uh, run by Hunter Morris of 93 yards was just a pitch to the wing back on that left side, and he got to the edge and took it nearly to the house. Lance Lang ran him down from behind. We'll get you his Kalon scoreboard update here in a minute. Gray Bend and Dodge City, how about that, tied at 21. The Western Athletic Conference matchup. Monarchs again with Watling and Harris ready to return this kick. Moody has it teed up for the Hoisington Cardinals. And this kick is a line drive that'll get over the head of Harris. He lets it go. We'll pick it up with the six. Cade now needs some blocks as he'll try and get to the right side. Instead, he'll get to the hash marks across the 15 and be stacked up. See where they spot him right around the 17 yard line. Well, fortunate to get back out that far is that ball. I think he kicked that with a wedge <laughs> the way it went over there, sailed over their heads and then it just died when it hit. So doing a pretty good job to pick it up and Harris alertly recognized it wasn't gonna go into the end zone like he thought. And, able to get it back out to near the 20 yard line. Marks will take over the right hash. Ball at the 18 yard line. Rack, one of the wide receivers with Wentling here to the left side of the formation, two to the right as Harris will work out of the shotgun. Back behind him is Dryling, or beside him is Dryling. Harris to throw, looking down the field, and it's overthrown, intercepted at the 40 yard line and returning it with a flag on the play inside the 30 to the 28 yard line. That pass was too tall. And intercepted by Dallin Hutchcraft. I think the flag on the field is after the interception, so it'll be a post possession. It's actually six and not eight. It's Wyatt Wickham with the interception. First interception thrown to the game. The third making the second Monarch turnover of the contest. The return was to the 25 of the Monarchs. Actually called the Hoisington Cardinals for the penalty. Called a block in the back on the return. Hoisington after the second Monarch turnover. will take over at the Monarch 33. 718, 719 to go in the third quarter. Hoisington already leads 35 to six. They've scored 35 unanswered points. We do have some breaking good news. The lights are back on. <laughs> Brewers, the wide receiver here to the left side, cross or make it cross to the left side. Brewers to the right side. And Haxton with three backs in the backfield, including Pedigo, and they're gonna get a false start called on, are they going to call delay a game? They're going to get delay a game on Hoisington. Nope, they do call false start on Hoisington. The penalty will be false start variety on Hoisington. So back them up five more yards, 25 yards of penalties on four penalties and Coach Baird and we heard the coaching staff down the hallway saying that uh, they thought that false start was called on the man who was going in motion. Official spots the ball at the 37 yard line. Following the second Monarch turnover, this is an interception. Wide receiver to the right side. On wide receiver to the left side. Man in motion. Instead, they'll give it right up the middle. It's uh, Pedigo who just sheds tacklers at the 30. Sidesteps a man to the 25, to the 20, to the 10. Five touchdown. Pedigo cannot be stopped. 38 yards on 
his fourth rushing touchdown of the contest. Well, yeah, with the uh, penalty, as I guess official, <laughs> he got 38 yards on the play. Uh, they started on the 33, one play, and they're in the end zone. 41-6, Hoisington with the lead. Ready to kick the extra point. And the kick is good, and it's 42 unanswered now for the Cardinals. Pedigo scored from 4-10. 20 and now 38. And he had a 38 yard pass reception as well. Better go on 15 carries. Which is his number here in a minute. He currently has 201 rushing yards on Three on uh, 13 carries. He has four rushing touchdowns. Pedigo last week against the Larned Indians. He went for 25 carries, 282, and five touchdowns. So he's went over 200 yards rushing in each of the last two weeks. He's got nine touchdowns in two weeks. Uh, he is an impressive player. I there's just... Uh, you just got to appreciate the fact that, I mean, he's just walking through tackles now. And he, uh, the, they've pounded him, and the TMP has been worn down. A lot of time left here in this third quarter, but 42 to 6 with 7.06 to go in the third. It's been all Cardinals. Mooney has it teed up. Monarchs, Harrison Whitling ready to return the kick. Kyle try and kick it away from Harris. He'll field it on the bounce inside the 20. Got a block from Whitling. He's trying to go right side with a man behind him. He'll slip a tackle and then be up across the 30. Out of the 32-yard line. Pretty good return by Cade Harris. He was able to outrun the defender from behind. Harris all the way to the TMP 33-yard line. Monarchs after the interception thrown by Harris a moment ago. In the drive by Hoisington, the touchdown. Monarchs will get it back. Thrown 33 yard line. And we've got 622 now to go. Here in this third quarter. Underneath center is Harris. Cade will hand it for the first back through. Colby Dryling. We'll get to the 38-yard line, so Colby picks up five. We saw that work with some success in the first half, especially on that opening drive. He picks up five there. So they're able to get to the 38-yard line. Wentling will be a wide receiver to the left side. Jason Rack to the near side as well. Jace Lang goes in motion, fake the handoff. Harris to throw, steps up, slings it down the field, and he's got his man. Once again, Lang makes the catch to the 48. That's a gain of 10 and a first down for the Monarchs as Lance Lang able to pick up the first down. Again, uh, just a pass where the <laughs> Cage just stepped into it, delivered a bullet across the middle on time uh, to his receiver, his favorite receiver tonight, Lance Lang, who's Kind of having a breakout night out to the whiteout tonight. Yeah, 54 re receiving yards on three catches so far. First down, Monarchs. They will hand it off to Dryling, trying to run off the left guard position. He gets into Hoisington territory. Spot him to the 48 as he gets stacked up after a gain of close to five. 13 as he has 34 yards now. Should give him just three on the play. Still a, a second down and short six. Washington's running in some new faces as this drive continues. Monarch Savage inside Hoisington territory at about the 48. Out of the shotgun is Harris looking to pass. He'll slide right, throw it down the numbers, and he overshot his man leg. And it's cut off his route down there around the 30-yard line, and it's incomplete. Brings up a third down and short six. 
Yeah, I'm not sure. They weren't on the same page if Lang thought he saw something and just broke off to to sit down, and, and Harris had already delivered it, looking for him to go deep. Monarchs have converted already one first down on this drive. Washington scored 42 unanswered with under four minutes to go here in the third. They lead 42 to six. Two wide receivers each side. Chase Lang will go in motion on that right. It'll be a keeper. Harris, Harris pulled it on the quarterback option as he's got the first down to the 39-yard line as Kate Harris will pick up nine and a first down to move the chains on the second first down of this drive for the Monarchs. Now that's the first time he's been able to find a little bit of room on the edge. And when he saw a little bit of a crease, did a good job of planting that foot and turning it up. And that came on third down. They're two of six on third down. And now we've got a timeout on the field. We've got an injury on a Hoisington player. As Chase Robinson, he's a reserve secondary player. Needs some help here to the nearest sideline as he banged up a little bit on that tackle attempt to see. He's gonna put a lot of pressure on a, that leg as he comes to the nearest sideline. Monarchs have it to the 38 yard line of Hoisington. Down 42 to six, but Try to drive here and get back on the board in this third quarter. Harris will give it off to Colby Dryling, who hit a man in the backfield and then kept his feet going and gets inside the 35 to the 34-yard line. That could have been blown up for a loss. Instead, Dryling just kept moving and picks up a nice gain of close to six on first down. Well, he's been running hard tonight. The yards are tough, but that, uh, like you said, that time able to bounce one in the backfield. And nice pickup on first down again for the Monarchs. A Monarch offensive line shuffled again with Garrett and Weston Pfeiffer in there along with Staub, Kraus, and Atherton. Here's a pass play on second down. Harris airing it out left, coming back and almost making the catch as it's knocked away. Jace Whitling got tangled up with a Hoisington Cardinal cross in coverage and then coming over late and doing a nice job over the top was Richards to finish him off and knock it away. It's incomplete now. Second down and five. Yeah, they got a personal foul roughing the passer on the late late hit in the backfield as they went low towards uh, the legs, the knees of uh, the quarterback. Harris took a shot, low shot, and they called him for the penalty. Harris all right on the play, but Winling took a pretty good hit down there as well from Richards. Dylan Richards covering over the top, so that 15-yard penalty is a free first down, the eighth of the game for the Monarchs. Listen. Penalty is the 40 or the fifth for 40 yards now. Really nice drive going for the Monarchs. We'll move them down to the 20-yard line, call it the 19. Harris looking to pass, looking right. Harris is going to have to take off and run with it as he will uh, try and make it inside the 20 down to the 15. That's where they spot him, right to the 15-yard line. So he picks up five on a little scramble on that right side. Brought down by Mooney after a gain of five. Okay, Harris scrambling that time. Sets him up second down and five. On second and five, Harris will work out of the shotgun with two wide receivers to each side. He's looking right, going to throw it late up, and it is caught in the back of the end zone for a touchdown as Jace Lang will come away with the catch. So the Monarchs for the second time in the game get on the board. This is a touchdown pass for Cade Harris, his first career touchdown pass from 15 yards out and so the Monarchs trail now 42 to 12 on the touchdown reception for Jace Lang. Eight plays, 67 yards and a and really a beautiful pass into the back of the end zone as it 
Just cleared the hand of a defender back there and a nice adjustment on the ball and getting his feet down, or a foot down at least. Got a couple of feet down in the back of that end zone and now Jace Welling is on to attempt the extra points and he was one for three coming in but he can't convert on this one and he's 0 for two. But the Monarchs still able to get on the board and they trail 42 to 12. That puts an end to 42 unanswered points scored for the Hoisington Cardinals and with the running clock that well, could be the end of the quarter as Harris was able to find Jace Lang Jace had a catch a week ago he's able to haul that one in from 15 yards out for the touchdown well that was that was a good drive put together by the Monarchs and really something they they needed We'll go ahead and take the quarter break. 42 to 12, we're back in one minute to the Monarch Sports Network, serviced by Dave's Auto Repair. Classic Quality Body Shop has had the pleasure of serving this area since 1984. Much like a sports team, Shelton and his team have worked hard, grown together, and followed the playbook of taking care of customers to become one of the most highly regarded body shops in the area. Support your local team, whether on the field or when choosing who you do business with. Thank you, thank you for choosing the style of Classic Quality Body Shop. See their ad in the next tech directory. Good morning. Everyone in Hayes says you can clean anything. So can you get this tough stain out? Grape jelly, we can get that out. Wow, you guys really are good. Master Cleaners in Hayes offers a variety of services including dry cleaning, alterations, laundry, tuxedo rentals, and free pickup and delivery. This is Eagle TV. are able to get on the board this thanks to a Kate Harris touchdown pass to Jace Lang from 15 yards out Harris will throw his first career touchdown and uh, for Jace Lang he gets his first career touchdown reception of 15 yards as the Monarchs are ready to kick it away as we'll have a continuous clock through this fourth quarter and the Monarchs are going to try for the onside kick but a good job by Hoisington to recover Hoisington read it the entire way and I think it was Gilliland who recovered it, and it was at the 45-yard line, making the 46-yard line. So the Monarchs decide to try for the onside kick, and Hoisington will get it back at their own 46. Well, had a couple of players bearing down on it. Wintling was in, on, in there getting close to it, but like you said, a pretty good play just to cover it up for Hoisington. Cardinals with that big lead will start to see some New faces in the contest. We already saw Hunter Morris come in and rip off a 93-yard gain. Crosses a wide receiver. Morris went in motion, and they fumble it in the backfield. Haxton, the quarterback, is able to dive back on top of it, and the Monarchs get it. Monarch came away with it. Jinx Lang was the one who came away with it. For a second, it looked like Haxton had it, but instead it is a fumble and a turnover. That is the fourth fumble, but just the second turnover for Hoisington, and Jace Lang comes away with the fumble recovery. Well, keep keep plugging. You want to put some more points on the board. So from Good the, chance here with a short field at the 41 and a half, 40, between the 41 and 42. We'll call right it right around the... Hoisington 41-yard line. Monarchs will have it. 10, 40 to go here in the fourth quarter following the turnover by the Hoisington Cardinals. Monarchs working the shotgun. Two wide receivers to each side. Play action pass. Harris is going to take off and run to the 40. Harris will be thrown inside the 35 to about the 34-yard line. As Josh Ball makes the tackle. Cade Harris on first down. Picks up a gain of seven. A little scramble play. Well, no quitting the Monarchs as they continue to finally have found a little bit of a rhythm here on offense here in the second half. This is a ni another nice opportunity for them to finish strong. Lance Lang and Mice to the near side. Zach Mice in the near side. Here's a little play action. Harris is going to keep it on the read option with a flag coming in and the tackle inside the 35 by spec down to about the 34-yard line. This was thrown by the official behind the play, and it's holding on the Monarchs. 
And they want to stop the clock for some reason. They're going to, Monarchs are going to call timeout. The holding penalty is going to move the Monarchs back to around the 40. 44 yard line or so as the Monarchs take a timeout and stop the clock. Well, unfortunately, again, going from what would have been third and very short, it's going to be second down still, but penalty bug. Yeah, clock stops, stops here with 9.33 to go for the Monarchs. Penalties again an issue, although not nearly as bad as they have been. Six for 46 yards. Monarch Athletics brought to you part by Taco Shop, Gibbs Auto Supply, Redeem Designs, Physical Therapy, uh, Progressive Physical Therapy, TMP Marion Alumni, Insurance Planning, and Classic Quality Body Shop. Monarchs take the timeout. By way of the penalty, it will be back to the 43-yard line officially. And out of the timeout, Monarchs will send Zach Mice and Jace Whitling to the left side. Jace and Lance Lang here to the right side of the formation as Harris on second down and 11 works out of the shotgun. Jace Lang will go in motion and the handoff is to dry like Kobe inside the 40 and will be knocked down by Steiner. So he gets to the 40, actually it's the 36 yard line. And now they'll face a third down at about six. Yeah, another nice pickup for Dryling. Just 43 yards on 15 carries. Those are all new season highs for him. Another under, underneath handoff is to Dryling as he gets stood up close to the 31, but it's going to be enough for a first down. He needed seven. He picks up eight. And the Monarchs will move the chains for the ninth time here in this ball game. A gain of eight for Colby Dryling, who's over 50 yards now rushing. Yeah, well, they, you know, they've got some different players on defense in there now, I think. But there's also they've also got a mix. They've still got uh, ball out there. Yeah, Steiner Brewer still out there. As Had well. to go. Yep. So a lot of their starters still in there. Jace Lang will go in motion to the left side of the formation. Hard count. Harris fakes the handoff, and now he's going to keep it on the little read option. Made a man miss at the uh, line of scrimmage, and then had the ball ripped away, but he. Hoisington, I think, got back on top of it. No signal from the official. Harris had it ripped away, and Hoisington will get it back. So that'll be a loss, and then the fumble as Harris lost a couple of yards, and then the fumble. The officials are going to get together and talk it over. Jacob Specht was a look like the one in that neighborhood, and he ripped it away. Got an illegal shift on the Monarchs. So there was a flag before the penalty, or there was a flag before the play. And Hoisington will obviously decline it and take the result of the fumble. So Monarch Drive unfortunately stalls again with this time a turnover. That'll be their fourth turnover of the contest. Three fumbles actually make it their third. Two fumbles and an interception. Hoisington with 8-11 to go. Here in the ball game, they lead 42 to 12, and they take over at their own 32-yard line. Hoisington with two backs in the back, make it three backs in the backfield, and they just slip it to Josh Ball right up the middle of the fullback with a big game. Ball for the first down carry into Monarch territory, stop him at the 48-yard line. As Josh Ball was stepped, but now before he rips off a gain of 21 and a first down. He has 31 yards and a touchdown on four carries. Monarch secondary saved a touchdown that time. Yeah, I think it was Wentling back there that made the play, but. Yeah, from his safety position, saved another touchdown. And now rolling is and looking to throw his Haxton, and he had pressure in his face, and that one is incomplete. Garrett Pfeiffer providing the pressure. And now it's second down and 10. Yeah, good pressure applied by the Monarchs. Pretty good coverage again by Wentling downfield, and quarterback running to his left. 
full out. Tough pass to make. Throwing back to the right. Axon three of six passing in the game for 31 yards. Of course, that had that 38-yard uh, screen pass, but then had a pass to himself that lost 11 yards. There's a pitch right side. It's Morris again. He got to the sideline. Another huge gain as he'll be pulled down inside the Monarch 25-yard line. Hunter Morris had a 93-yard gain a moment ago. Now he goes down to the Monarch 24-yard line. This one goes for a gain of 25 and another first down. 126 now rushing on three carries for Hunter Morris. And Hoisington gets inside the Monarch 25 to about the 24. Pitch it left side. Steiner's got blockers out in front. So he'll get inside the 20, brought down at the 19-yard line. So picks up four on the plate is Steiner. Monarchs. Secondary again, making a big play that time. And a tackle. Wentling and company. Cross will be to the left side. Ball from the Monarch 19-yard line. It's second down and four. Motion man Steiner. Instead, it'll be a quarterback keeper for Haxton as he just takes it right behind the big fullback ball and gets it to the 14-yard line. It's enough for a first down on a gain of five. They have 17 first downs now in the contest. Haxton 58 yards on six carries. Getting a running clock here with the deficits of 42 to 12. Clock will wind close to 50 or to uh, five minutes to go here in this one. Wide receiver set to each side, cross to the left. Motion man is Morris. They fake the pitch to him. Fading is Haxton throwing off his back foot, and it is picked off in the end zone, taken away by the Monarchs. As that is an interception for Mark Rack, and then a flag came in late as Rack returned it across the 10 up to the 11-yard line. First career interception for Mark Rack. And now the flag is right near where Rack was brought down. Another turnover by Hoisington as we... I don't know if they called offense. I didn't see the signal, but yeah. the flag came out early in the play, so he might have been blocking downfield with an offensive pass interference. Of course, they're going to decline that. TMP's going to take a timeout here. Yeah, they just signaled that the Monarchs declined it. As Haxton throws his first interception of the game. And they still have... Turned it over now three times. They have a fumble here in the second half, a fumble in the first half. That was in the second quarter, an interception. So it's been anything but perfect by Hoisington. Monarchs do take the timeout as they'll take over here. Coach Harris takes the timeout. They've got, says two more. I think they took one earlier, so should have one left here in the second half. But either way, Monarchs with 4.23 to go in the contest. We'll take over. Spotted it at the Monarch 16 yard line. A lot of backups and younger players in the game for Hoisington. Monarchs after the rack interception. We'll have it at the 11 is where they'll actually spot it. So they spotted at the 11 yard line. And now the Monarchs will come out in the double tight eye formation. One wide receiver to the left. Harris is just going to hand it to the first back through. That's Colby Dryling. Is Dryling with a good game? He kind of danced right around the line of scrimmage and then gets across the 20. Dryling picks up seven on first down. They get get of about eight on first down. Well, it's a good way to start the drive when you're that deep. Just punch it up the middle, Dryling again, finding some nice yards here in the second half. He had 24 rushing yards coming in on 10 carries. He's already carried it 17 times for 59 yards and now blown up in the backfield. Marks unable to get anything going that time. And so now it's third down. The 
Sparks bring Andrew Schwartz into the ball game for the first time. The 145 pound quarterback. After he got no gain that last time, here's a handoff to Lance Lang who lost it. He had it knocked away on a good tackle to the 25, but one of the Monarch offensive linemen was able to dive on it. Lang gets up a little bit slow as Staub jumped on it. Lance Lang picks up close to nine before the fumble. But it is enough for a Monarch first down, their 10th of the game. Only had four last year in the whole game. 250 and counting here in this one. It's 42 to 12. Hoisington with the lead. It was 21-6 at halftime. Cardinals then, after a lengthy halftime break because of some light issues, kind of jumped on the Monarchs here in this third quarter. Lang will carry it again. Lance across the 30 to the 31 before he's brought down on the play by Goland. Well, we saw the speed of Lang on that defensive tackle that he saved a touchdown on coming across the field. Like to see him break one in the open, see if he can knock off a long one here. And he's been shifty. Marks with a lot of new faces into the game as well. Racks the wide receiver to the right side. Schwartz will hand it off. It's Lance Lang again, left side. He kind of gets folded up at the 35-36 yard line. Under two minutes to go now. That's enough for a first down. Lang lose the chains again. It's the 11th first down of this one. So the Monarchs are going to start district play 0-1 for the second year in a row and a loss to Hoisington. As the clock will wind as they reset the chains. Monarchs have it at the 36-yard line. The two tight end eye formation set for Schwartz. And he bobbled the snap. And they'll have to get back on it. Now second down. Second time that's happened. A positive note is they had the eight play touchdown drive to in this second half. And then they had a. A little bit of a drive going before they fumbled on the last possession, and now they've got a six-play drive going. And now hard count's going to bring Hoisington offside to the five-yard penalty for Hoisington. 45 yards now, and I think Park's going to take another timeout. Facing a second down, 45, 46.3 seconds to go in this one. The Monarchs will start district play 0-1. Hoisington will move to 1-0. They kind of jumped out early, or uh, rather here in this second half was able to jump out early, like what you saw in the early goings for the Monarchs, but Hoisington able to wear on them pretty quickly here in the second half. They, they really did. They just, they, they wore them out. Uh, but... Again, I like the the response by the Monarch offense here in the second half where they absolutely had nothing going. They've, they've finally found a little bit of something. And a 26 minute delay here at halftime because of the lights and Hoisington just came out more prepared after that pretty much as they kind of put it on the Monarchs early following that. Schwartz is looking to throw. He's gonna heave it deep down the middle of the field, jump ball and it's, Deflected. Jay Swintling, the intended receiver, he had a shot at it down there. I believe it's Swintling who was down there. Once it's incomplete. It was Swintling, and now timeout taken by the Monarchs. They'll face a third down here. Seems like they got an extra timeout in this half. <laughs> but I like the shot they're taking, and I, I think it's good to get Schwartz in there now, you know, get a little bit of playing time. As, uh, Monarchs shorthanded in their depth yeah. right now. Dealing with injuries like everybody else, but my side, the starting quarterback, the first three weeks of the season out for a little while because of the hand injury. And so Kate Harris called upon to run the offense for the Monarchs. Did a pretty good job. In this one, he completed five of ten passes. 
Over 70 yards. Schwartz again looking to pass here on third down. Throws it down the middle. Jump ball in and out of the intended receiver's hands. Michael Gross was down there. Him and Chase Whitling were both inside the 40, kind of in the same area as it is fourth down and five as the clock will wind, and that may do it. EMP may not get another snap off, and that will do it. So that's going to be our final tonight. Boise 10. After giving up an early touchdown to the TMP Monarchs on the run for Kate Harris from a yard out their opening possession drive, they scored 42 unanswered points. Monarchs would get a late touchdown in that third quarter. Our final tonight, 42-12 in favor of the Hoisington Cardinals. Cardinals take advantage of a number of big plays, including a 93-yard run by Hunter Morris. Wyatt Pettigo will go over 200 yards rushing unofficially on 13 carries. He had four touchdowns, one of 38, one of 30, one of four, and another of 10. He also had a 38-yard complete or a pass uh, touchdown reception as well. Meanwhile, the Monarchs were led by Kobe Dryling, who had 59 yards on 17 carries. Kate Harris will complete five of 10 passes or 76 yards in the contest. To get our final 42-12, Boisington comes away with the victory. Cardinals stay perfect, they're 4-0. Meanwhile, the Monarchs will drop to one and three on the season. Again, our final 42-12 in favor of Boisington on the Monarch Sports Network, serviced by Dave's Auto Repair.